Daniel Larson is a man who needs no introduction to those familiar with my channel or the darker corners of internet fame. His story, a complex saga of mental health struggles, internet notoriety, and controversial incidents has captivated and alarmed viewers all across the world. I am Kusari, the creator of this docuseries and a YouTuber who specializes in uncovering and presenting intricate and complex stories like Daniel's. My goal with this series has been to provide a detailed, unbiased, and comprehensive view of his life's journey which continues to unfold in unexpected and often disturbing ways. In this third installment, we delve deeper into the ever-evolving narrative of Daniel Larson. From dramatic public meltdowns to legal challenges and persistent online controversies, Daniel's journey remains as turbulent as ever. We will explore the latest developments in his life, including his ongoing battles with mental health, housing instability, the legal system, and the complex relationship with his followers and the public. In the first part of this series, the Daniel Larson documentary, we trace Daniel's troubled beginnings. Born into a challenging environment, he faced- What? The White Bowser is back? Really? That's fucking crazy. Hey, Murphy, how you doing? Hey, Josie, how you doing? Hey, Sarah, how you doing? Hey, Purple Peak, how you doing? <laughs> Man, that's nuts. Is he live or something right now? Or should I check on it? Or what's going on with the Earl Doobie? Hey, Purple Tomato Cinema. That's cool. You like growing the heirloom tomatoes. That's awesome. I like the heirloom ones, too. Based a rough childhood marked by unfortunate family dynamics and the early onset of mental health issues. His ambitions in music and acting were quickly overshadowed by erratic behaviors and a burgeoning on... Hey, Cosmic Latte. How you doing? Why aren't you playing? <laughs> ...line presence, which quickly garnered fascination and concern from the World Wide Web. The beginnings of Daniel's story involve his foray into social media, particularly TikTok, where his strange content rapidly attracted a significant following. This period of his life was riddled with many troubling incidents, including inappropriate online activities and allegations of sexual misconduct, particularly towards minors. His responses to these accusations... I'm sipping on some Arizona green tea tonight. One of my friends from Africa, he works for a, a Chinese guy, and he said that his tea was so strong that he made a pot of it and drank it like he would normal green tea, and he said he was up for like two days and throw it up and stuff like that. I was like, damn, I need to get a hold of me some of that green tea, you know? ...actions <laughs> were often contradictory, suggesting either manipulation by others or attempts to deflect blame. He also during this time started showing an uncomfortable but rather notorious fixation and obsession with the singer-songwriter and America's Got Talent winner Grace Vanderwall. Part 2 picked up the thread of Daniel's journey as he embarked on a cross-country odyssey. His travels from Arizona to Texas and eventually to New York City were loaded with financial difficulties, bizarre encounters, and moments of distress and violence. NYC also introduced interactions with other internet personalities like Joshua Block and Michael Quinn, further complicating Daniel's already chaotic story. His return to Colorado was particularly turbulent, featuring incidents like the dog arc, which culminated in a physical confrontation and subsequent involvement with law enforcement. This particular chapter in Daniel's life was a roller coaster of public meltdowns, confrontations, and troubling behavior, illustrating his ongoing battle with mental health and the pressures of internet infamy. Before we dive deeper into Daniel Larson's story in this third installment, I must issue a trigger warning. I know many of you like to complain about my usage of trigger warnings in the beginning of my videos, but the truth of the matter is that Daniel's story by nature is extremely disturbing. Throughout this series we have encountered and will continue to encounter themes, topics, events, and imagery that may be upsetting or triggering to some viewers. These include mental health issues, homelessness, allegations of sexual misconduct, and incidents of violence and disturbing behavior. If you are sensitive to any of these things or are under the age of 18, your discretion is strongly advised. So with all of that said, let's embark on the next chapter of the Daniel Larson documentary as we delve into the more recent developments in his life and continue to unravel the enigma that is Daniel Larson. This is part three. On 
On July 13th, a voicemail with a distinct medicated tone was left by Daniel, presumably for his manager Warren from the mental health hospital he was staying at. This message, shared by Flexburger on the Daniel Larson subreddit, had Daniel updating his status and discussing his discharge process. I just wanted to let you know that I put in a request so you can be able to call me and get updates on the progress of my discharge and the progress summary if you really want that information. In the meantime, I just wanted to call and let you know that. Anyways, phones do get cut off at 10 p.m. and they do turn back on in the morning. So I will call you again tomorrow. If you are getting this message, I will give you a call back tomorrow. Bye. By July 19th, Daniel had been discharged from the mental health unit, and upon release, he revealed his ongoing search for his missing dog and his intention to take legal action against the alleged dog napper. He then uploaded a video titled, Proof Daniel Larson Can Take Care of a Dog, where he is seen simply giving water to his former dog, Music. Despite unverified claims about reacquiring Music, it appeared unlikely that he would adopt any animal in Longmont, Colorado ever again. This period also saw Daniel claiming to have bought another dog and considering purchasing a cat. However, his videos contradicted these claims, leading local animal shelters to be advised against allowing him to adopt any animals, thus marking the end of the dog arc, and hopefully any future arcs involving any sort of Give me a second. I'm going to Smokey's Twitter real quick. Okay, where you at? There we go. All right, let's read this shit. Let's read this shit. Uh, okay, I'm in Firefox now. All right, I sent White Bowser an email over nine months ago and received no response. Tonight during the show, I unknowingly re received a response from him after all these months. I'll just say it feels like someone is feeding him false info saying that we lied about him. And, of course, old Bowser took the bait. We all knew he would. Hey, man, I've been sure to save your email for a while when I would finally be able it will be ready to strike back. I've got two separate screenshots of you. Apparently, more than just myself has been lying. In fact, I, <laughs> I might have been telling the truth about a few things for a long time. Rest assured, I have five Reddit alt accounts, five Discord alt accounts, and so many more. I'm behind seven firewalls, motherfucker. A lot of you think I'm still hiding. You couldn't be more wrong. I have a collection of screenshots too as well. And I got a lot of insider knowledge on your operating too. My eyes are on the Kiwi Farms constantly. You know when I said that you were going to win the battle, you're not going to win the war. The story that's been revealed, I never groped a miner. All of you lied to everyone. That little house of cards you built is all going to come crashing down. You really underestimate your opponent. You forgot I know how to play chess. Yeah, he's got that 110 IQ, right? He's a fucking genius, right? All a huge 110 IQ he's got that he brags about. Even though 110 is standard deviation, the average IQ is between 90 and 110. But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> of animal. On July 20th, Daniel encountered trolls posing as members of a fictitious security company, United Contractors of Cargillana. I'm sorry if I butchered that. They falsely informed him that music was taken by malicious Reddit moderators and that all of the trolling was orchestrated by the YouTuber Goaded Minds. Daniel recorded these interactions secretly and later uploaded the footage. Okay, I need to know like the website or like anything that I can look up. Mr. Breed, can you show him the website? Yes. Is what happened with music is you were actually trolled by very dangerous Reddit moderators. Uh, I'm, I'm, sure you're so I'm, I'm aware of that. Yes. It's um. Do you mind if we go somewhere more private so we can discuss this? I'm not talking like it's like down there. The furthest I can go is like right where the uh, yeah, that's perfect. Right where the umbrella is in. We're talking like about right down there. Financial information, so we don't want it. the risk of any. Unaligned parties here. So I can go right here. Yes. Might I say, Mr. Larson, it's quite the honor meeting you. Um, I'm a personal fan of your work. Yes. We're very great fans. Yeah. Um, but your dog music, to cut it shortly, we know where it is. And everything the Reddit has been saying is a lie. 
is the Reddit believes I, you have yes. passed away. Mr. We Martin. actually sent you a message. I don't know if you saw it, but we actually currently are near possession of the dog, but there are very powerful people that are trying to steal it from us. We are doing our best efforts to keep the dog secure. All right, Mr. Bruno and Larson. So well, this is our company. We are the United Contractors of Cordelia, Inc. Here I go once again with the email. Every week I hope that it's from a female. Oh man, it's not from a female. Hey strong man, can you draw a dragon? I want to see your skills of an artist. Okay. Well, G2G, guys are from California. A dragon? That's easy. Feel free to follow along with my simple step-by-step -step instructions. I make drawing fun. To begin, draw an S. Or snake, or dragon, or whatever. Next, we'll draw a more different S. For the head, put a top mark on a long V. Then you add some legs, throw on a couple of arms, and whoa, wait a minute. I think I need to start over. This thing doesn't look natural. Okay, starting again, the same way. S, more different S. Close it up real good at the top for his head, and then, using consummate Vs, give him teeth, spinities, and angry eyebrows. And you can add smoke or fire, or maybe some wings. You know, if he's a wingling dragon. Let's put one of those beefy arms back on him for good measure. That looks really good. Coming out of the back of his neck there. Now he needs a name. How about... Trogdor, the Burninator. <laughs> this is just a blurb about us. Man. So basically what we are is we're agents sent to contact very high profile people. Yes. You know. We need the highest up of the highest. Yes. Up. And we offer a multitude of services ranging from security to music production to you know, great uh, regular construction, many, many different things. Supposedly Adult Swim is talking about rebooting uh, Aqua Teen. I think that'd be fucking awesome because that was overall, I don't know, man, there's a lot of really good Adult Swim shows, but that one is probably my overall favorite. And I don't know, Squid Billies was really good too. We yes. work with all sorts of high profile. with some of the most powerful people in the government. Did you guys have like a phone number or anything? Like we a way know, of contact? We phone numbers. We're very, it's very easy. secure. Phone numbers are, and phone numbers are actually the reason that your phone got yes. hacked. That's your how we found dog you. Dog was tracked. So um, and also, you want to know the reason why your dog was uh, stolen from you? I would like to, yeah. Right. If you know anything. Yes, we know. We have a good amount of information that we cannot disclose as of now because we're in a public Yes, this is place. a very public area. Um, what troll was it that stole his dog? It was, a, it was a female. Your dog, yes. Yes, so we know. Your, we know he's a, we, we, we are in possession of music. We right have now. reason to believe that a troll known as Goaded Minds is behind the dog napping. Yes. Because I know who did it, and it was a female that took the dog. It was a woman. Okay. It was a woman. So Goaded Minds kind of heavy has a a network. Uh, he actually has a network of people in a Discord server dedicated to tracking you and that's how they found the dog yes and they found you and we were able to put pressure on them to return the dog to us but they're trying to steal it from us again which is why we're contacting you today kd never underestimate the weirdness of the internet man there's probably someone out there who wants to jump daniel's bones for real and we actually prepared to explain this one so we because of what goaded minds has done we have reason to believe that your phone mr larson has been hacked or bugged by goaded minds and that's how he was able to track you so we were sent here by our work order to provide you with a new de-hacked unbugged phone we do have reason to believe that your phone has been compromised by malicious individuals who are trying to hurt 
your reputation and you know all everything surrounding you. We came here with the, this is an encrypted de-hacked phone. We want to provide you with. Yes, if you want to switch it out with your phone. I'm surprised no one started releasing a. Uh new PlayStation 2s, you know, like the consoles they do for the Super Nintendos and they're like Famicoms and multiple things. You know, it wouldn't be hard to do because we had PlayStation emulators back in fucking 1996 or 7, you know, there's Bleem. You know, so fucking, it's, it's doable, you know, they could totally, you could pro that. I wish I, I had enough money to do that because I would totally do that. Oh, so that we can do I cannot do that. This, this actually has uh, two other celebrity numbers on this phone that I cannot give out. We can add those numbers. I cannot do that, sorry. Okay. Um, what do I have to say? In the morning, it is buzzed. I'm aware of hey, that. Hey, Black, how you doing tonight? Yeah, I know. I'm so excited that they're going to start bringing back new Aqua Teen. Aqua Teen was the shit. Frylock was cool as fuck, too. But my favorite character was Master Shake because he was just such a stupid asshole. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't have a Discord on my phone at all. Currently, um, like I don't have Discord as an app. I don't even like other than just my family numbers on this phone. There's no other numbers connected. Yeah, me. a lot of those really cheap handhelds you see that are PlayStation have PlayStation emulators on them. They're like uh, a 500 megahertz processor with 128 megabytes of RAM. Shit, just spend a hundred dollars on a Raspberry Pi and get uh, the retro. The, there's an actual OS that they use for that, and that's what I would use. I'd just make a Raspberry Pi build. I wouldn't, you know, try to do it on everything else. I've seen some really cool portables, like they take a Game Boy-looking case, and they put the ra Raspberry Pi in it, and they've got Joy-Cons. It's pretty fucking cool. The contract is stated that we were to give you this in exchange for your phone so that we can de-hack your phone and then bring it back to I, once again, I'm just not able to do that. Like, this has, like, my lawyer's numbers and all sorts of private information. I cannot get out. The contract? I'm, the answer would be no. Well, what else do we have? We have quite a few other but Sari, we all know that blowing on them works, even though they tell you not to do it. We all know that blowing in that fucking normal Nintendo, blowing that cartridge off helps. And then they tell you not to do it. I don't understand why. <laughs> well, I believe that we're, our contract also stated that we were to provide you with security. Yes. You too. I, I actually have somewhere else I gotta go. I'm meeting up with family. So with my, my family, so like I have somewhere else to go. That's why I was asking for a contact. Can we give you a contact? Um, okay. The next day, Daniel traveled to Glenwood Springs, about 160 miles from Denver. On the 22nd, Daniel visited Glenwood Caverns Adventure Park, sharing a video where he discussed being expelled from a hotel and delayed his post due to concerns of being doxxed. Okay, so someone called the police on me. Um, and I got trespassed from the Hotel Glenwood Springs, permanently trespassed. Um, somebody called the police on me, claimed that I had a, uh, I was filming kids, is what they claimed. After the police showed up, they didn't find anything, and they cleared me, and, um, because the police were called to that location, they permanently trespassed me. So, um, I know the person who possibly called. I've been having issues with this person for a long time. And um, we are working on a current lawsuit against him. Daniel resumed regular posting on his YouTube community tab, including claims that he was being blackmailed and sharing falsified tweets by the FBI claiming awareness of his pedophilia and warnings that they were searching for him. He posted repeatedly, listing celebrities that he would have sex with in a clear breakdown and then threatened self-harm. On July 24th, the day after the YouTube community meltdown, Daniel uploaded a video with false claims about the FBI arresting Grace Vanderwall for her associations with him. Okay, this is a code silver. This is a code silver. Grace Vanderwall just had the FBI show up at her house. She is being taken into custody. She's literally being taken into custody right now. And the FBI is trying to find me to take me to Russia. This is 
confirmed. My assistant, Warren, is freaking out and he literally just said like, what the actual fuck while I was on the phone with him. Like, this is no joke, this is real. And anyone who's not believing this, this is insane. I am not a threat and neither is Grace. And you guys are involving Grace in the middle of this. Hey everyone. Alrighty, there's a, a current emergency going on. Um, if you guys haven't seen my posts in the last uh, two days, um, there, uh, my popularity has really been on the rise. Um, yes, it is true. I am a politician. Yes, it is true that I am a singer-songwriter. I'm also an actor. And yes, it is true that I am, in fact, in contact with other celebrities. Fortunately, on my rise to fame, I have been... Yeah, they say that, Black, but what I, whenever I was taught it, it was by a nerdier guy, he said, hold your mouth far away from it so you don't get any moisture from your mouth on it. So I was doing that, you know what I mean? <laughs> Manipulated numerous of times framed and blackmailed to post and say certain things and do certain things. Um, that's all I can really say. I'm not going to go into extreme detail. There's no reason to. I'm going to keep this nice and simple. Um, yes, I am extremely popular and I'm trying to get security. Yes, I have tried to contact security companies, law enforcement over popularity and death threats that I have been receiving numerous of times. Nobody shows up. Nobody cares. Nobody anything. So, of course, as far as my safety, I have to do what I need to do to protect myself. I am not a threat. Hold on one second. I have to go. I am getting somebody is texting me um, with threats right now. My popular, well, first of all, I can say that I think the nuclear airstrike attack was fake. Um, I think that that message was fake that we were receiving. Um, also, what I, know, what I know right now that's going on is I was manipulated into doing the Pinterest framed and blackmailed. I was getting death threats uh, over it. People were showing up to my property where I was living and was showing up on property. Oh, hi. How are you, buddy? Um, yeah, it's been a long time. I know. How's it going? Well, I'm famous now. Yeah? Yeah. I've... Tell me about it. So I'm a singer-songwriter. Oh, my... I'm a singer-songwriter. He loves when he gets to say that, doesn't he? Daniel just loves the shit out of the... Yeah! Work out here. Singer-songwriter. Yep. I have three songs now on the radio. Three songs? Mm -hmm. On the radio? What station? Um, well, I don't know exactly what stations. They've been made in New York. Hey, Electric. How you doing? And I'm on iHeartRadio, and okay. um, I have my, my music on Spotify, like all distributions, everything. Okay. Yeah. It's sure been a while. Yeah. How old are you now? I'm 24. Where are you living? I am currently homeless. Okay. But I am making it, so. And I'm going into studios, which is only making me more money, so. Yeah. I'm pulling up and out. Okay. How'd you get over here? I took the train. Just coming to Thornton just was, or what? Coming to Thornton. Where are you headed? I know, you know he smells like piss, because, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, and there's always a little drop or something that comes out that you don't even feel or nothing, you know what I mean? So you know he's, he reeks of piss. I'm just heading to the, like, up north, just kind of walking around right now. Yeah. I heard your grandma died. Yes. It's hard. Yeah, it is. I was sad when I heard that, too. You know, your nana and I have a good relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. We were just talking about you the other day. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Nice seeing you. You too, Dan. Be careful, all right? All right, we'll do. Okay. So, since T Pain was the first rapper to really use auto tune, 
he uh, really thought highly of Usher and wanted to talk to him. And he went to talk to him, and Usher said to T-Pain, he said, uh, thank you for ruining music. And, <laughs> and T-Pain said that stuck with him for a long time. Yeah, back to what I was saying is I know that um, Joe Biden has gone public about um, terrorist threats towards me. I am also aware that um, all these, basically my popularity is skyrocketing through the roof and getting to international level to where people are seeing my videos and posts. That's a good thing. The issue is if people are seeing one video, they're only seeing like, they're only seeing part of the information. They're not seeing everything. Well, of course, you know, it's more fun to Daniel to pretend like he's rich and famous and all that shit than to come back down to the horrible reality of he's homeless and he needs to move into a group home because he's, you know, Daniel. Thing. And depending on the video, who knows if it's the truth. Okay. You guys, like I said before, you guys need to believe what I say. Okay. I'm not a threat. I hate it when people say that. I do need security protection. So I need protection. I'm not lying about that. I am not a pedophile. I never will ever in my life have sex with a child. So I don't care what the media says. I own up to my word. I am sick and tired of people threatening me, playing all these dumb games, okay? Trying to frame me, it's ridiculous. Now, as far as the threats that I have made, that is only because I fear for my safety. I have called security companies. I have called numerous, I have called numerous, uh, times to 911 dispatch and police nobody has ever done anything all they do is they trespass me because of my popularity and they tell me to leave and i'm sick and tired of playing that game so i felt like i you know how he talks about playing games and all that shit you know that's what people said to his fucking stupid ass when he's acting crazy you know someone said that to him. I am not. I don't have time for your games today. He said that to Bob and shit. I guarantee someone said that to Daniel. I had to do what I needed to do to get my wife, my situation heard. Two days later, Daniel live streamed from a gas station during a storm, seeking assistance from his manager, Warren. In the stream, he claimed a confrontation occurred with two individuals, leading to an alleged assault. Okay, so today when it was storming outside, um, hold on one second. So, today when it was storming outside, okay, I went to the gas station to try to take shelter from the rain and the cloud to ground lightning. And, um, during the time I was taking shelter, my phone was at 1% battery. So, I tried to call, um, my assistant to try to get Lil Wayne gay too. He'd be kissing Birdman on the lips and shit like that. <laughs> I think there's a lot of thug love, you know, going on behind the scenes there. So shit, you know, in the, in the whole rap industry, you know. <laughs> Protection um, and try to figure out a safety plan because of the storm. Okay. And I got, well, when I was on the phone with Warren, Warren heard everything. Okay. Why is my phone not blocking okay weird my phone is for some reason not blocking some of the hateful comments i wonder why strange but like i said i was getting harassed okay the gas station when i first got there i plugged in my phone okay so i get to the gas station there's cloud of ground lightning around me it's not really pouring rain but it's sprinkling looks like it's gonna pour rain and I plug my phone in at the gas station. I try to call Warren. Warren answers and immediately um, there's two people that were at the gas station getting gas. Starts coming up to me and is like, do something, kind of, you know, trying to cause a fight. And I'm like, I'm not 
you know, basically I was, you know, telling them to stop, okay? And before I put hands on anybody, the guy grabbed my throat like this and pushed me to the ground. And I was screaming on the phone. Warren heard it. He heard everything and he freaked out. He thought that I was either going to die or something very, very serious was going to happen. Okay. He also shared a TikTok video where he claimed responsibility for breaking a gas station window. This is because the label does at me and tells me to fuck Bob. I broke a gas station window with a rock. Additionally, he posted screenshots of disturbing messages from trolls disguised as celebrities and showcased a legal notice for a mandatory court appearance for destruction of private property worth up to $2,000. On July 27th, 2023, a revealing conversation with Daniel's former caregiver shed light on his turbulent stay and the challenges he posed. I will say that this conversation does get pretty disturbing, so if you guys want to back out now, here's the timestamp that you guys can skip to. But yeah, let's just dive right into it. The caregiver, who only recently became aware of Daniel's online popularity through TikTok, recalled the period between fall 2019 and spring of 2020 when Daniel resided in his home. He moved in fall of 2019 and he was kicked out spring of 2020. Uh, I didn't even know that he was like, TikTok quote unquote famous until last night. Uh, I saw like a random video with him in it. And I was like, what the hell? He came to my house because, from what I understand, the last host home kicked him out because of just mass amounts of property damage. Uh, it's just like headbutting the walls, kicking the walls. Um, I was told that he just doesn't do well with females and that with a male provider, he would be much better. Uh, I probably had about a good month and a half, two months, and then just hell broke loose. He said the first couple months, we call that a grace period, when they kind of get settled in, they're like excited to stay with the new family or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was absolutely terrible. <laughs> um, kind of just putting a background first here before we get into the, the good shit. Um, so what else? Also, it's considered person-centered services. It's different when they're an adult. Um, you do not have the ability to like take their human rights away. So if he does not want to take meds, he doesn't have to take them. If he's his own guardian, which he was. Um, if he wants therapy, he has the right to have it. He can refuse. Employment, he can refuse. It, it's difficult. So like when you're working with an individual like Daniel, who kind of has this delusional mindset of that, you know, he's gonna be famous, all these people love him, he's a movie star, a singer. He's more focused on that and just throws away all of the opportunities that are presented to him to help his mental health. <laughs> um, yeah, and Bob, he enabled that. Yeah, he came over to the house multiple times. Honestly, like, as a person, Bob's great, at least when I worked with him. Um, hey, Ultima, how you doing tonight? He's very pleasant. I mean, obviously, I say hi he to, cared about Dan. I say hi to Josie. I try and say hi to everybody, but sometimes, you know. <laughs> safety. Um, but he had absolutely no idea how to work with someone with a disability. I, I'm still trying to get, like I said, I just discovered this last night, so I'm still kind of watching all the videos and the documentaries and updates on Daniel, which has been extremely interesting to see. Um, but, uh, I mean, yeah, like, in the home, I advocated for him to get SMB therapy which is therapy for individuals who age in like grooming potential like pedophiles or people that have like really bad sexual boundaries. Um, I can tell you just with living with me, uh, he was trying to groom all of my other individuals who were much less functioning than him. Kept um, trying, grooming is just, sorry, grooming is like, uh, you know, oh, hey, Critty, how you doing? Getting them into like favors, like giving them things to get things in return. Um, he was doing that a lot, um, like sexually grooming people, um, bribing them. Um, so this, I was able to get cameras installed in the home, which is a very, very difficult restriction to get to the state. But because of is this real or not? I don't, I don't know. Daniel's behaviors, you know, I was able to get it through. 
I also saw there was an incident with like a toothbrush. Um, that honestly doesn't surprise me. So uh, when he got kicked out of my house, uh, he basically was arrested at my house um, for assaulting his roommate. Um, I had like restrain him and hold him on, hold him down on my front porch until police got there because he kept trying to bite me. Yeah, I have like a massive scar on my left forearm from him. <laughs> But uh, as far as like the toothbrush thing goes, uh, when I had to clean his room out, um, I had found one of my used drumsticks that was all splintered and it was covered in shit. Um, there were multiple phone cords that were also covered in shit. Um, he had a Barbie doll that was covered in shit. So that, yeah, I mean, he, he's a very sexualized individual. <laughs> I've taken care of so many individuals, like physical, like physically aggressive individuals, extremely like emotionally damaged individuals, type of thing. Um, they all, to some extent, have some motivation to like, like do better for themselves. Daniel was the only one that didn't. Like every, everyone was a liar. Everyone was against him. I, I know him very well. Um, do you know? So Ryan lives with me still. Oh, so this is the one of the things they criticize Kasari for is putting uh, the phone call that's fake in the middle of the documentary. Okay, I understand. I understand why they're bitching to him about that. Yes, I've had Ryan from the start. Ryan has some similar actual behaviors to Daniel. But Ryan isn't quite as high-functioning, and he doesn't understand his actions as much. Typically, Ryan will groom people, but... Daniel kind of being more alpha in the sense that he has a little, you know, his IQ is a bit higher, you know, it's just, you know, um, Daniel would groom him instead. And yeah, that was one of the individuals that I was talking about earlier, you know, that he kept grooming in the household. Um, I mean, there were multiple times where I would wake up in the middle of the night because my cameras would go off and Daniel would try to sneak into Ryan's room. Yeah, it, it went back and forth, but with no doubt in my mind daniel kind of controlled that situation yeah yeah i mean he, he always used the term his fans yeah like, you want me to skip this because this is this isn't real and it's actually pretty long here we go want my cat in either the rooms the yeah, this is the cat, this yeah this is the cat call that's supposed to be bullshit i heard it that's not true conversation was posted daniel uploaded an almost 13 minute long video to his youtube channel of him having yet another argument with bob in his car while he was driving the perplexing video posted on his YouTube channel was titled New Corruption with the Law. The video featured an intense discussion between Daniel and Bob Proctor, with the context of their conversation remaining somewhat ambiguous. They delved into various topics, including their personal relationship, Grace Vanderwall, Jacob Satorius, and other figures within the so-called Larsenverse. The conversation was seemingly prompted by a deep fake image of a new Jacob Satorius that Daniel had supposedly received via text. If we go back up there, I don't want to hear you say that I shouldn't have bought it with my own money. It, you just seem very controlling, as if you are like my guardian all of a sudden. And you've been acting that way. It's my money. I could do what I want. Yeah, that's fine. If I wanted this particular phone plan because it's better for my phone, then I will do this phone plan. Okay? And you won't listen to anything I say. To say. You want... Well, I do and listen. I do listen to you. You just don't want to listen to me. You're telling me that Grace should already be here in Colorado. I don't want to have anything to do with Grace. I keep telling but you, that. and I said okay at the time. But you keep telling me. Because we thought that it would be better. My assistant and I thought it would be better if we made a group chat. So we made the group chat. It doesn't have anything. And I'm sorry about the... Re oh, no, I'm not criticizing Kasari. I I'm just saying that's what other people... You know what I mean? I, I, I think it's cool that it's in there. I thought it was real, too, when I first heard it, you know, and then I had people tell me it wasn't, you know, over time. But I thought it was real, too. They, f they fooled me. They fooled me, too. <laughs> Recording studio getting canceled. I'm sorry, but I don't know who did it. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Sagittarius or whatever his name is. Because he had her phone. Like, he's had it every time. It's Jacob Sertorius. Dick Muscle Man. Okay, you just pissed me off. Well, what else is he? He would have been more understanding if we would have just got, like, actually gotten everything done. 
but I've been sitting here arguing almost every day with you. Like, this is our... Shit, Fruity, that sucks. Here for, uh... I'll do one that'll get your mind off this quicker than the, the documentary. Where is... Where is it? All right, let's watch this. <laughs> this is my favorite. Yes, I have a trespasser in my sitting on my yeah, patio in yeah. the front of my house. My uh. Yeah, that sucks a lot, Fruity. Yeah, when you get old, over time, you lose lots more friends. You lose friends in car wrecks and all kinds of crazy shit. I'm, I'm missing a lot of friends. Every now and then, I do the gangster, just one for the homies that ain't here. You know what I mean? And I dump out a beer on the ground and shit. I do that sometimes. I'm weird. I'd like this person removed. Get the fuck out. I'm telling you. Did you fucking hear what I said? Get the fuck out of here. What the fuck is wrong with you? A trespasser sitting on my porch who doesn't want to leave. No. I don't know. I. That's what I said. Yeah. Wearing like a jogging outfit, red stripe, black pants with a red stripe, sweatshirt with a backpack, looks like a homeless person needs to get off my property. I don't know. If they do, they better show it right now. Uh, you can't blame him though. Andrews is a, 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 <laughs> Daniel is a very androgynous motherfucker. He really is though. Like you know, he, yeah. <laughs> okay. If I ever see you on this fucking property again, there's gonna be consequences. Do you understand me? You don't come over here charging your fucking phone and using my fucking electricity. Who the fuck are you? I suggest you get the fuck out of here because they're on their fucking way. Are you gonna wait? Is that what you're waiting for? I don't know what you're gonna do. I don't know if you're I'm gonna- I'm asking you a fucking question! You better get the fuck off of here. Get the fuck out of here before I fucking move you out of here. If you take one step closer. Get the fuck off my property. If you take one step get closer. Get the fuck off my property. If you take one step closer. Get the fuck off my fucking property. They're coming for you, you stupid fuck. Don't you understand? If you Why are you fucking here? If you put one hand on me. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, nigger. Really? It's going to be like that? You're you're threatening me, and I don't I don't know I don't I don't know I don't know if you're going to put hands Did on you me or her. call me a nigger. If you're going to put hands on me, you better get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. They're coming for you, bud. Whatever the fuck you are, get the fuck out of here. Why are you here? You think you could just come on on somebody's fucking property, use their shit and get the fuck out? Who the fuck are you? 
Get the fuck out of here! No, because I, I'm afraid What to, do you mean no? I'm afraid, I, I, I'm afraid you if you- better start walking! I'm gonna give you the opportunity to start walking! What the fuck is your fucking problem? If you're gonna put hands on Get me- Get your fucking ass out of here! Don't fucking come here! Don't you fucking show your face around here again! What the fuck are you gonna do? You want me to fuck you up? Is that what you want? Get the fuck out of here and don't fucking come back! Don't do it, bud. Don't do it. If you're going to put hands on me... Get the fuck out of here! Okay. I tried to get you into the studio. I understand that. Maybe I should just go... I know, Black. Uh, that should have been funny if you got to beat up for that. Yeah, it's definitely my favorite fruit. Yeah, that is by far my favorite Daniel Larson freak out because that guy was giving him the business. You know what I mean? That, you know, he was cowering in fear. I bet you, I would love to see the fear in his eyes. It's been beautiful. To the hospital with you. We could both turn ourselves in because you were hitting yourself and I was earlier. Maybe we should both go in now. This is why I don't get something, anything done anymore. It's because I'm sitting here arguing with you. I'm driving. What do you want me to do instead? Well, we have just have a normal fucking conversation for once without arguing. And for you to actually understand my choices are my life and my choices. They are. It's worked out swell. Oh my god. I understand that. And I understand that you're partially upset that Jacob and Grace never well Grace never came to Colorado and that she apparently lied to me. I'm sorry. Sorry about everything. I'm sorry I'm alive. I saw you hitting yourself, so if you want to do that some more, go right ahead. Not a lot, Goon. Just watching some crazy stuff. I'm uh, from now on when I do video streams, I'm going to use OBS because it's in 10. Uh, I can set it to 1080p, 60 FPS. But I'm going to keep Streamyard because you never know, and you might have someone that's interesting to come and talk to you. You know what I mean? Get it out while you can. I'm sorry, I'm alive too. Get it out while you can. Because I don't want to be around you if you're going to act this way. Literally ever since you picked me up at Union Station, this is all it's been. And I, like, I was calm. You're the one who, like, literally just started, like, going, like, I'm going to hit myself after we buy the phone. I'm the one with the fucking money. I'm the one buying the goddamn phone. What? You literally got angry in there. You hit yourself in the fucking store. I'm surprised the store security didn't get involved. Holy just crap. Just limit, Daniel. I understand that, but you need to listen to me and calm down. I told you that you need to just talk to the label and actually express yourself for once. Let them know you're concerned, because everything would have worked out better. I'm sorry that I fucking suck, and I'm sorry I have a small fucking dick. You don't have a small fucking dick. There's pictures of you just as big on there. Well, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry for everything. Yeah, Bob does seem like the kind of guy that, yeah, if he lost his wife, it would bother him a lot. You know what I mean? That's how it is. Sometimes you love too deeply, and then you're just like, I don't know if I want to ever love anybody ever again, you know, ever, like, ever, you know? <laughs> I guess we're going to be arguing now for the rest of our lives because you hate me, and I hate your attitude. For you to tell me to buy a different phone plan that literally has less gig bites. It didn't. It did. Why did my old phone just randomly stop working? Exactly. Well, Daniel's too fucking stupid to put an SD card in a phone. That's that's delicious. And Bob's such an old man, he doesn't know they exist, so he couldn't tell him. <laughs> Got the blind leading the fucking blind around here. I just called you out, too. This deal is only available at Walmart. It's a I, Walmart deal. I understand that. That's not my problem. Why are we using Walmart and not actually going to a store and buying a more expensive phone, too? Well, that's what you said you wanted to go. Well, I mean, I understand that. But we've been using family mobile. Well, we've been using all these prepaid phones and all these cheaper phones. So I guess it is what it is. We don't have the money right now to just keep blowing it on things. That's why we've kept buying these cheaper phones. And we keep messing up with because all these stupid plans. Every time 
you would have busted another a regular phone, it would have cost you three or four hundred dollars. And that's my fault, and I take the I take the blame for it. But the real the real reason, as we know, is we get in arguments over Grace and the label and how we're doing things and I guess that For real though, there is no need to spend more than like two hundred and fifty dollars on a phone. Like it makes calls and it uses apps, you know what I mean? Like unless you're some kind of cell phone gamer or some shit like that, which you know, I couldn't even imagine someone even putting them words together, you know. <laughs> That's my fault too, but it's my life and if I wanna do it a certain way, you know, I wanna have say. So I guess we're both equal. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're involved and I'm sorry that this is not working out and everything is all fucked now. But I'm sorry that you're, you're blaming yourself. I really am. And you're blaming everything. No. I never said that. Man. And that's the thing that I don't understand is you're so stubborn. Like I was saying, you always think that like other things is your fault and when I say it's not you don't want to move on and then we come back and then, around and, and you say well you caused the problem with grace you probably caused the problem with the label and it's, caused... it's, it's, it's because we were both working together in booking the recording studio sessions yes. and we and the label wanted it done faster and I was trying to do that. I remember calling you up every, almost every day, talking to you about it. Five minutes and I'd say, let's do it. And you'd say, oh no, I gotta go. And, and that's, then it would that's be three days later. That's because Warren, or <laughs> of course the label, messages me getting upset about time frames. And then I call you back after. Nope. There's where we have the problem. We don't Anything that does apps, you know, and doesn't take forever to do them is NASA to me. You know what I mean? As long as it reads QR codes and, you know, I can use the Walmart app without it stuttering, I'm cool with that phone. <laughs> I had a $70 phone for like three years. And I put a 256 gigabyte SD card in it. That's why, you know, I was thought, thought it was funny that Bob and Daniel don't know anything about SD cards. A 256 gigabyte SD card is $13. Call me I call you back the next day. Or but, two days, three days later, but, I say, let's do it. I say, okay. What I'm but doing, still, I mean, I'm busy trying to sort other things out, like my fucking homeless life. No, like, you know, I also had to deal with Grace being upset, you know? And, of course, now Jacob Sartorius and her issue with him, you know? And then we're arguing about it because you're like, Grace should have been here in Denver already. Yes, you said, hold on, hold on. You hold on. Because you're changing my words. I said, how many times has she promised to be here? And she's never Exactly. Shown up. That's not that I'm saying she should have been here. Well, she that, said, that, that kind of is. If she said she was going to be all the time, she, she should be she here. Should have been. Exactly. Okay. I'm sorry that she didn't own up to her word. If I'd have told you tonight that I wasn't coming to get you and just hadn't showed up, what would have that been? If I'd last night, I spent an hour and a half looking for you. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry we keep busting our money out on motel rooms as well. When we should have been putting it towards more important things like the apartment or home. You know what's real fucked up? If you die of cancer like in the next 10 years, it's going to be real sad. Because with CRISPR gene therapy, pretty soon cancer is going to be a shot. You'd be like, oh fuck, I got the cancer. You know, and instead of them addressing the shit that's in our, you know, diet and environment that's giving us cancer, you know, they're just going to fix the cancer. Thumbs up for humans, right? We're real fucking smart, aren't we? <laughs> like, more permanent housing. I'm sorry. And, like, I'm trying to be calm mm -hmm. and I'm trying to, like, okay. really be honest with you. Okay. And I understand that you also booked the three, re I mean, the three days in the motel. And... That's yeah. my fault. We should have saved that money. Okay, but we didn't. And you needed a place to stay, and it was raining, and you need to have a bed to sleep in once in a while. I know, and that's where most of my money was going. Yeah. I understand. We're going to do anything? Yes, we this? are. Okay. But I also understand that, you know, I also know 
that if I get back into disability housing or resources, they won't want me on social media. They probably won't, just like they didn't before. I know. And that's also why I didn't want to do that at the time. I wanted the apartment. Okay. All right. Are you calm now? And yeah. Social media and all the gray shit is just his drug, man. That's Daniel's drug. He lives on that shit. Have we, calm. have we talked about everything that we need to talk about? Yeah. All, all right. need to do is get the phone working. Okay. Or return it and go to an AT&T store. Okay. Go to Target. If I, yes, I know. So, we're right. gonna need all yeah. of the package. Yeah, let's go. The story continued when on July 28th, Daniel once again admitted to pedophilia in two videos. Following these confessions, his TikTok account was banned. On July 29th, during a TikTok live stream, Jacob Sartorius was asked about Daniel. He appeared unsure of who Daniel was, describing him as, quote unquote, I think that's like a TikToker pretty much, showing a lackluster understanding of him and even calling him his fan at one point. <clears throat> you can ask him. Uh, Daniel Larson? Um... I think that's like a TikToker, pretty much, but I uh, think it's somebody that, like, calls me out in all their videos or something. Oh, uh, yeah. So I do know them. Yeah, I do know them. Uh, it's alright. He's just a fan. Yeah, <laughs> He's a fan. It's fine. What can we do? <laughs> he has something against me. On the first day of August, Daniel shared a revealing post on his community tab, featuring a screenshot of a text conversation. In this exchange, the other party expressed discomfort at being referred to by a racial- Hey Andy, how you doing tonight? ...slur, presumably used- That is not a deal breaker, but as a black owned business, we don't appreciate being called the N word after you were removed from housing. Racism isn't taken lightly, but we're sure you can grow. <laughs> Thank you. He's such a fucking asshole, isn't he? You know, I wouldn't, I would dislike, I I would hate Daniel a lot less if he wasn't such a piece of shit. You know what I mean? Like, Daniel deserves the worst, man. Anything bad that can happen to him, he deserves, man. It's by Daniel. This individual also brought up Daniel's history of violent outbursts and property damage, often occurring during his meltdowns. The conversation concluded with this person severing their association with Daniel, citing the toxic environment fostered by his quote unquote fans. Furthermore, Daniel uploaded three screenshots of different individuals, seemingly children, with two labeled past management and the third as quote unquote, one of my past managers. August 3rd once again brought Jacob Sartorius into the mix as he addressed questions about an alleged feud with Daniel during a TikTok live. Jacob clarified having no issues with Daniel and seemed perplexed about his involvement in Daniel's controversies. He also mentioned having watched some of Daniel's videos. Yeah, I have nothing against Daniel. Um, and that's about it. It's I, like, I, I, I see all these- of, I don't know any context to that. I see all the comments, trust me. Um, I will not be fighting Daniel Larson. <laughs> I mean, I know who Daniel Larson is, but I have no idea what the context of him re related to. Did he call you out or something and ask you to fight him? I don't know. The lag is crazy. It just took you 10 seconds to go, I don't know, after I asked that. I don't know what, what's really going on. All I know is that it's it's all love on this side. Um, and that's about it, you know? Um, I'm, I'm about just as confused as you, Madison. You at least know your name though, right? See, that's, that is part of the drama. I think he's saying something about Grace Vanderwall, and I don't have any connection to Grace Vanderwall, never have spoken to her, so that's why it's a little bit, um, little bit confusing. Um, but it's all love, like I said. Um, and I wish him the best. It's the craziest like thing. None of us, none not of us know. Like, we know of each other all, but um, I don't know. It's all love on this side, guys. I have nothing. I'll address it because there's no, there's no drama. Um, let's go. Can I be honest? With oh man, I'm smoking resin that I scraped out of the bong bowl. I'm fucking. I'll, I'll, you'll hear me coughing bad. With you, bro. Dude, be as honest as you want to be. Show me zero. Bro, I hate, I hate when people do this to me, Johnny O. But I'm a huge fan of this. guy. I don't know why I cough like that. My dad doesn't smoke, and when he hits weed, he coughs that same way, too. I don't, I don't know. Uh, you know what I mean? It's just, I guess it's my family's cough, right? You know, something like that. I'm a huge fan of this guy. 
and I saw a video with you about him. What's the Daniel, what's the Daniel Larson shit? Oh, look, I've said it multiple times on live before. <laughs> I know Daniel Larson. I've seen his videos. I don't know what problem he has with me. Alexandria! But look, I don't have any beef with him, man. I, I, it's all love from my end. I don't know how I got brought into this, or I don't know the people that are involved in this love from my side. And uh, I don't know, man. I, I know who you're talking about. I, I've seen his videos. The Xbox 360 days. Back whenever you're in a modern warfare uh, fucking lobby and 10-year-old racist for saying the N-word every five seconds, you know? <laughs> This is very viral. But dude, it's confusing to me, bro. I don't know how I got even. You watch. A few days later on August 6th, significant developments occurred. Daniel released a video. Hey, Gruesome, how you doing? Claiming Grace Vanderwall would accompany him to court, suggesting his arrest was imminent if she failed to show up. So at my next court date, apparently Grace Vanderwall has to show up to the court because they're not believing that I'm in contact. The court is not believing me. So, apparently, I'm in big trouble, um, and if Grace doesn't show up, I could be arrested. Additionally, a nearly 28-minute video surfaced, capturing a confrontation between Daniel and a security guard at a mall. The mall, well aware of Daniel's history, repeatedly requested Daniel to leave due to his habit of sleeping in public areas. Daniel was eventually handed a notice and escorted off the property, claiming he was banned from an area around Colorado Mills. On August 8th, Daniel declared that he was banned from Smashburger following a confrontation with the manager, subsequently ranting about teenagers being employed as managers. Okay, everyone, so we have a serious issue. Businesses are now doing hate crimes on me. I have been banned today, like permanently lifetime banned from the fast food restaurant Smash Burger. Um, the reason being is my phone was about dead, so I needed to go charge my phone um, to call family uh, because of a bank account issue, okay? So I walk into Smashburger and I ask the front desk, the cashier, if I can get a cup of ice water. They give me the cup of ice water. I say, give me one minute, I'm gonna come back up, I'm going to order. I go sit down, well first of all I go refill my cup. Baby boomers are, you know there's some good baby boomers, but in general, they, they drove around constantly, so they drove out all the gas. You know what I mean? They fucking, they let coal factories uh, fire. They let coal uh, electric, you know, factories, power plants. There we go. They, they let those get so bad that it was sulfuric raining in like the 90s and shit like that. You know, Gen X has fixed a lot of the shit they did. Baby boomers, man, they... Yeah, man, they, they were the most greedy, entitled, you know, fucking... You know, and, uh, you know, I, I have a lot of baby boomers in my family. You know, a lot of my aunts and uncles are baby boomers. And the fact that my aunts and uncles' opinions are what a group shares are incredibly crazy. Like, they believe in that reefer madness type of shit. You know, they got all that crazy shit in their head. They're they're the generation that hid underneath the fucking uh, the desks. You know, oh, the nukes come and hide under the desks and the desk will protect you. You know what I mean? They're them guys. Cup of water. I go sit down. And within seconds, the manager comes over and says, you can't be in here and asks me to leave. I say, why can't I be inside um, here? Um, I haven't done anything. By that point, everybody in the store starts staring, trying to figure out what's going on. And the manager says, we've seen your cosmic. It is disgusting that every city in the U.S. does not have recycling fucking a recycling bin for their shit. Everyone should have a recycling bin to throw their plastic and shit like that in. It They mandate these electric bills, you know, that increase the rate for fucking three times in four hours to make you pay more money for your utilities. But actually doing something worthwhile, you know, like making sure every city recycles their plastic and shit, that's too much. That's too much government control for them, you know? Your social media, and because of that, we don't want you here. That was their excuse, and they asked me to leave. So I get up, and I say, 
I didn't do anything. If you guys are going to ban me, call the police, send paperwork, show paperwork. They refused and they tried to put hands on me. By that point, I get up and I forcefully back up and I walk out the door. So apparently I am banned from Smash Burger now, so another boycott. I want everyone to not go to Smash Burger. I can't believe this, but... I, I identify a lot with baby boomers because my grandparents raised me for six years. I, I So I, I have a lot of their weird hang-ups, but at the same time I'm not, you know what I mean? I, I'm not the same as other people in my generation at all because I was raised with my grandparents for six years. And then my dad got his shit together and I moved in with him. People don't know how to hire for jobs. I've noticed that out of all the places that I'm getting ban permanently banned from, it's all literal teenagers that are managers. People are graduating high school, zero college, and their very first job they apply for is like literally you know like a fast food shit man most computers and video game consoles don't even have a disk drive uh fiber kind of makes media redundant you know what i mean because you can delete a game and then download it again in like 15 minutes you know what i mean it's there's gonna pretty soon there will be no disk drives man it's gonna be a weird fucking world it's gonna be weird as hell i guess it's that you will own nothing and be happy kind of shit right food restaurant and they apply to be general manager. I think that that is straight up absurd. Mid-August witnessed a whirlwind of activity from Daniel. On the 15th, Daniel disposed of his Panda Express dinner into a river and spent nearly $500 on sex toys. His Cameo account was suspended on August 16th, leading him to accuse trolls and Warren of reporting him. That same day, a flight he had scheduled to New York City was canceled after he leaked his confirmation number as well as his... Be careful, Sarah. I've got them fucking cheap Chinese thumb drives before, and they'll say that they're bigger than they are, and when you try and write a file to it, it'll corrupt the whole fucking drive and it won't boot again. <laughs> I've had that happen before. Phone number. By August 21st, he was discovered sleeping under a bridge and falsely claimed to have a court date. The 22nd was marked by even more alarming behavior, with Daniel threatening to plant bombs in a park during a live video. I have a gun. You're not at my location, and if if you do put gun, me at gunpoint, like I said, I've hidden bombs at this park. You will blow up. Don't play around. In a more alarming turn, he issued a threat to bomb Bob Proctor's house unless he received millions of dollars. His mental state appeared increasingly unstable. That's why I think people talking about this last freak out that was pretty mild, man. He was just mad, you know what I mean? He's, he's threatened to bomb fucking Bob a million times, you know? And I'm a bit, you know? <laughs> As he hinted at thoughts of self-harm on his community tab. Adding to his troubles, Daniel received ominous text messages from an anonymous number, warning him of surveillance and threatening to shut down his Cash App account. Amidst this term- Don't worry about fiber, man. The, the government gave a bunch of uh, subsidy money to the uh, phone companies. Everywhere in the U.S. is getting fiber pretty soon. In like five or six years, everybody will have fiber. And that'll be cool, you know what I mean? And it, the fiber optic network is a lot more reliable than the phone lines are now and shit like that. So it's just, you know, the progression of the technology. And fiber optic lines are good for petabytes a second, which is like like uh, the entire Internet is in exabytes. A petabyte is the thing above that. So... You know, it could download the whole internet in half of a second. Japan did it. So basically what they're going to do is those the fiber optic lines would be good for fucking ever. You know, it'll be 90, 100 years from now and we'll still be using those fucking things. Moyle, he was seen traveling on a bus and contemplated checking into a mental health facility, troubled by the content on his subreddit. August 25th unfolded with drama. Daniel experienced a minor meltdown using offensive language after narrowly avoiding an accident involving a car or a bike. This incident was shared on his Instagram by an unidentified source. Oh man, you didn't know about call wave in the 90s, man. We th I thought I was hot shit because I knew, it, knew I had a program that would let a phone call go through while you're on the internet. I thought I was the coolest shit ever back then, you know. You couldn't use the internet and the phone at the same time, but it would pause the internet so you could make the phone call. You know, I don't know. It was pretty neat. However, it was more than likely his management. Ooh. Fuck you! 
fucking bitch! Ah, oh, idiot! Don't you fucking see me walking? He claimed to have witnessed a teenage girl conversing with five boys about engaging in sexual activities and was seen drinking an airhead flavored beverage. Spotted at Union Station, he made several alarming claims. A fictional man named Tyrone's release from prison and intent to harm both him and Grace Vanderwall, financial struggles including having no meals and needing $10,000, and revealing a near miss with a vehicle or a bike. On August 27th, Daniel's actions escalated further. He posted a disturbing two-minute video of himself self-harming and using racial slurs, which he quickly deleted. On August 29th, Daniel's circumstances took a grim turn. With no funds to his name, he spent the night on the streets of Denver. During this time, overwhelmed by frustration, Daniel lashed out by breaking yet another window of an unspecified establishment. As the morning light dawned, Daniel's turmoil continued. His mental state deteriorated further as he expressed suicidal thoughts provoked by a fake Grace on Kick who accused him of being a pedophile. The day progressed into one of Daniel's most violent and mentally debilitating meltdowns of 2023, primarily unfolding on his YouTube community page. This meltdown was 16-bit is unique in the fact that it looked really good for what it was, you know what I mean? was triggered by threats from the fake Grace Vanderwall and his harrowing night on the streets. During a YouTube live stream, Daniel's condition was starkly evident. You know what? You know what? I've always had a thought in the back of my mind that would be cool to do: make a brand new internet with dial-up that all the people with classic computers, you know, from the '90s and shit, like we could all dial up in there and you know have like a, an internet with you know no no more advanced than HTML3 or some shit like that. You know, I think that that'd be something cool to do, like a classic internet. I don't know, maybe I'm just weird. I want her fucking dead. I want her fucking dead. I want her fucking dead. I want Christ fucking dead. I want... I want her fucking dead. I want her fucking dead. Yeah, this one's crazier than the one from a couple of days ago, I think, personally, you know. I want her fucking dead. I want her fucking dead. And he's punching himself in the face and head button wall. I don't know. I feel like that's worse than the last one. Because a lot of people are saying, I've never seen him so mad. It's like, yeah, we have. And this is it right here. I want her fucking dead. I want her fucking dead. I want her fucking... <laughs> I want her fucking dead. I want Grace fucking dead. I want Grace fucking dead. This is for her. This is for her because she's fucking been behind all the manipulation ever since the beginning. Yeah, that was gross when he was licking that snot, wasn't it? That was nasty, man. That was fucking gross. I've never seen anything as vile as that in my life, man. Ugh. <laughs> He's not very intelligent, you know. They could totally catfish him with a persona that's not real instead of using Grace Vanderwall. You know, and it would become more effective, too, because then he'd be talking to multiple girls. I don't know. I feel like it would work better than just pretending to be the same person over and over and over again. But maybe that's just me. I want her fucking dead. I want her fucking dead. I want her fucking dead. Hey, Deacon, how you doing? This message is to Grace. Grace is a fucking n and a hater, and I will always hate her now because of what she did. And yes, I will bomb the White House. I will fucking bomb the White House. 
I will fucking bomb every single police. Yeah, they're amputating his toenails. Yeah, they're doing that. That's fucking, he's got an appointment and everything. They're going to amputate his damn toenails. He's going to lose his feet and be in a wheelchair, but, you know, he's, Daniel, he's not smart enough to stay off his feet for a month. Station in the entire U.S. And Grace told me to make this video. His threats escalated to alarming proportions as he threatened to kill Beyonce, commit suicide, and even bomb the White House alongside threats against the U.S. government, all police stations, and Columbia Records. His erratic behavior included using racial slurs against his manager Warren, attempting to dox Grace Vanderwall, and claiming that bombs were dropped on Grace's house in Russia. In a shocking twist. Well, you know, if Daniel doesn't end up going to jail for four months, you know, pretty soon, he probably will lose his feet walking around being homeless. It, it, it could happen. It's, you know, the odds are pretty good of that, you know. He even threatened to kill Grace himself and attempted to contact Tina Vanderwall. Amidst this chaos, Daniel sought to remove his nudes from the internet and texted a screenshot of his conversation to 911. As August drew to a close, Daniel's situation remained volatile. The day's tensions peaked when Daniel and Bob Proctor engaged in a physical altercation inside Bob's car following a verbal argument. The incident led to an interaction with the police and Daniel claimed that Bob had quote unquote run him over with his car. The altercation began with Dan I fucking screamed when I was reading his community tab and I seen them fucking toenails, man. I straight up screamed. That was an organic scream. I was like, ah! <laughs> Daniel arguing with Bob after being told not to use his phone in Bob's presence. Daniel protested, insisting it was his legal right to bring his phone to dinner. Yep, and there's lots of homeless people who aren't like Daniel and they work and stuff like that too. But I've also known homeless people that flew a sign, you know, I've talked to them in my hotel rooms and shit like that. You meet a lot of interesting people in bad neighborhood hotel rooms, you really do and accused Bob of causing issues and being unhelpful. The argument escalated as Bob demanded Daniel turn off his phone and place it in the car's console. Daniel refused, asserting his right to film for his own protection, which he deemed necessary for the ridiculous situation. A heated exchange ensued, culminating in Bob forcefully ejecting Daniel from his car, leading Daniel to accuse Bob of running him over, an allegation that remains unverified and likely untrue. So I wasn't going to film, but since you have a problem with me bringing my phone in the car, okay, now I'm going to film because that's my legal right, okay? So you're causing this issue to yourself. You are literally causing this issue to yourself. And I guess I will go without fucking dinner now because you have a problem with me even bringing my phone with me, which is my fucking legal right. You are crazy. You are never helpful anymore. All you do is cause issues. You told me not to be on the phone in the car. I wasn't. I said, turn off your phone and put it in the console. And you said, yes. I'm not going to put it in the console, but I will be more than happy to stay off my phone and turn it off. You had a problem with me, like literally having it on my seat. The phone was literally turned off. Okay, I just turned it on to film this because you had a problem with that. I'm now filming for my protection. This is ridiculous. You are so stubborn, like I was saying before. So, are we going to get dinner? Or are you taking me back to the motel and I'm just going to not have anything for dinner? And I'm not going to eat today at all. And I guess I'll starve tonight. So what is it? Get out. I'm not going to do it. Because I had my phone Get the fucking out of my car! Okay, don't fucking grab me. You want me to break your fucking arm? If you break my arm... Get it... the fuck out of my car! Okay, then let go of me, fucker! If you fucking hit me, fucker... Holy fuck, where did my phone go? Where did my fucking phone go? Oh, you are hitting me! You're hitting me! God damn you! You hit me first, bitch! Get out of my car! You hit me first! I'm not playing these games with you! Holy fucking hell, bitch! Don't grab me like that! Don't fucking grab me! Grab me! You hit me! No! You hit, you hit me repeatedly! Oh, then let go of me! Get out of my car! Fucker. Quit hitting me! You hit me so I get have a right to car. defend myself! Get out Fucker. of my car! Get out of my car! Now where's my phone, bitch? Get open the door and you'll find us! Out of my car! Damn, I, I wonder why Bob doesn't talk to Daniel anymore, right? I, I, I don't know. There, I can't, I can't think of a reason. You know, Daniel's such a good guy. You know. God damn you! I'm 
gonna call the cops then. No, because you hit me. Get the hell out of you, my car. You hit me, fucker. And where did he go, fucker? Better find it. Where did he go? Where did the fuck did he go? Where the fuck did he go? Ow! Fucking! Get away from my car! Holy fucking hell! You ran over me, fucker! Fucker! You fucking ran over me, fucker! Following this incident, Daniel made a community post announcing his intention to call 911. He subsequently filmed yet another video at the motel, displaying aggressive and self-destructive behavior while reiterating his claim that Bob had run him over. Bob, Bob just ran me over with his fucking car. Bob just fucking ran me over with his fucking car. Bob just ran me over with his car. Bob just ran me over. Bob just ran me over. Bob just ran me over with his car. My fucking foot hurts. Bob just ran me over with his car. Bob just ran me over with his car. Daniel uses pity as a. Uh... That's how he manipulates people is with pity. He's always done it. That's why he acts and talks like this. He's so pathetic. Be a man. Fucking bitch! I just ran me over, fucker. Fucking bitch! Fucking bitch! Bob is a bitch! I feel like the pesticides or something in our diet is causing autism to spike up. It's not vaccines. I'm talking about like carbiral or, you know, fucking, you know, Roundup and shit like that. You know, one of those weird chemicals. It's a bitch. Bob is a bitch. <laughs> he hurt me. He fucking hurt me. <laughs> On his community tab, he claimed fear of Bob, expressed a desire for justice, and announced filing a restraining order against him. Daniel also claimed he was returning to the same mental hospital that had previously medicated him, asserting self-defense in his altercation with Bob and yearning for peace and resolution. That's another reason we need electric cars. Whenever you breathe in exhaust gases and shit, combustion particles bypass the blood-brain barrier. So literally... The cars driving around on the road, if you live in a big city, it changes the way you think because of the particles. You know, that's, you know, I, I don't really know about global warming. I don't even care. All I know is that electric cars would be better for everybody involved. You know what I mean? He further claimed that Bob had violated his rights without elaborating on the specifics. As the day ended, Daniel streamed a conversation with the police. Oh, there's microplastics in the fucking rain now, dude. When it rains, rains plastic now. Yeah, we need to stop using plastic. That's our lead. Like, the Romans knew that lead poisoned them, but they kept using lead like a bunch of dumbasses. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with us. We should be smarter than them, right? During which he gave a mostly truthful account of the encounter, albeit with several false claims. The uncertainty surrounding any charges filed against Bob Link Oh, no, I'm a car guy, man. I love the way old 60s cars, especially the dirty-ass exhaust that they make, man. I like all them smells and shit. Doesn't make him good for you, though, you know? Angered, <laughs> as it appeared none were made despite Daniel's police report. The final days of August encapsulated a harrowing chapter in Daniel's life, marked by extreme volatility and distress. On September 6th, The average person, because of microplastics, has a credit card's worth of plastic in their body. So take your debit card, pick it up, look at it, and feel it, and be like, damn, man, I got one of these in me right now, because that's what it is. <laughs> Six, Daniel started his day with breakfast at Dunkin' Donuts, and he excitedly announced a new chapter in his life, hinting at upcoming content for his audience. September 7th saw Daniel post two angry messages on his community tab, which were swiftly deleted not before being captured and shared on the Daniel Larson subreddit. He continued to post threatening messages, seemingly seeking attention amid his aggravation. Daniel shared a video about his trench foot, claiming it was incurable and blaming Bob for it, while demanding compensation. September 9th witnessed an escalation in Daniel's behavior. He threatened self-harm. Oh, there's already companies that do retrofits. They make electric power plants that hook directly up to the old transmissions and shit. Yeah, but 
I, I wish I had I, my car. My dream car is a 1962 Oldsmobile 98 convertible white with tan leather. That's what I really, really want. And the thing that sucks about those is 63. They got a better motor. The fucking the 62 is a piece of shit left over from the 50s. You know, one of those 180 horsepower fucking 300 some odd cubic. You know what I mean? The 50s technology. I'd, I'd drive that thing until it blew up, and then I'd put like a 454 or something modern in that shit. ...in a message to someone believed to be a troll and asked for calm. He stated his intention to quit the music industry if more AI covers using his voice were created. Daniel shared a picture of himself being recognized by someone and responded to a YouTube comment, likely from a person attempting to assist him. After consuming a San Pellegrino during a live stream, he faked being drunk. Shit, they can make uh, gasoline directly from the air with certain chemicals. I can't remember how they do it, but they call it direct air tra direct air capture. And uh, it costs like $600 to make a gallon of it, but, you know, they can make gasoline from the fucking the air through chemical processes. It's pretty amazing shit. He claimed to be scammed and stranded until his next paycheck discussed arson against a mental hospital for pressuring him to collaborate with Bob Proctor and claimed to have been sexually harassed. He, surprisingly enough, ended the day at Folsom Field, the football field for the Colorado... Yeah, Critty, you got, you got taste, you know. You know you know it's about the old cruisers. Fuck, uh, fuck all them muscle cars because, yeah, they look good and they're fast, but they, they can't corner or nothing like that, so you might as well drive a cruiser from back then. You know, if someone runs into your 7,000-pound car, you're going to be fine in there, <laughs> you know. Auto Buffaloes. On September 10th, Daniel threatened to kill Bob if he discovered Grace Vanderwall was unfaithful. He claimed to have been employed and then fired by Uber Eats, created and then had a PayPal account suspended, and then set up a new Cash App account. He also stated he was $100 in debt and planned to enroll at CU Boulder in 2024. September 11th was another eventful day, not for the reasons you might be thinking, with Daniel claimed to have established yet another YouTube channel and announcing his college enrollment plans. He attended Colorado University in a frat party where he was photographed by fans. September 12th culminated with Nathan, a member of the Pi Kappa Tau fraternity, sharing videos on TikTok of Daniel holding a fraternity shirt, adding yet another chapter to Daniel's unpredictable story. Hi, this is Daniel Larson, and you guys should Pi Kappa Tau. <laughs> On the 13th, Daniel was filmed at the Taco Junkie Tequila Bar with Pi Kappa Tau members. A notable moment was captured when he kissed a woman's cheek, his first recorded intimate interaction with a woman who is of age. Come on! That's fire! On September 14th, video shared by user ClearValue6404 on Reddit depicted Daniel's interactions, including an attempt at bench pressing, an interview with trolls, and a dorm tour where he was mocked. No. Right? And I'm Grace Vanderbilt's sister, right? Right. Yeah. As much as I like the old American cruisers, if it came right down to it, I'd rather have a... Like let's say let's say a uh, 1992. I'd rather have the Toyota Super or the RX-7 over the uh, Mustang or Camaro. Of course, a Corvette's always going to be a Corvette. You, you know what I mean? But out of the smaller car, out of the you know pony cars, I'd rather have like an RX-7 or a Toyota Super that year. Yeah, go in there.
Just don't like sit down. <laughs> yeah, I, I got I got rabies. <laughs> like children with a. I never seen it. <laughs> people are being actually like dangerous. Okay, so if people are being dangerous, you can say the N word. If if I need to for safety, just scare them look, off. Look, look, <laughs> yeah. Like a, like a tactical slur. Wait. Her name is Nick. Last name Gur. Put it together. Oh. <laughs> Why would you do that? I was exposing him! Yeah, Daniel. Wait, you were in the Special Olympics? Yeah, I was. Did you win? I actually won, yeah. Oh, what, where are we currently? Uh, CU. CU currently? Yeah. Currently? Currently. We're on the tennis court. Okay, cool. Holy shit, he looks crazy as fuck, man. Look at those oh, eyes. There we go. Yeah, keep your eye on the ball. Don't think, just do. <laughs> Look at this. That's the word. Thank you, coach. Like this, it says, oh, you gotta go up. You gotta go up. Yeah. Keep your eye on the ball. President. Okay, wait, Daniel. So you're the president, yeah. right? You're a coach. You're a student. You're a player. You are a man of all trades. And, and you're a singer. And he's a singer. I'm a singer. You're a stripper. I'm a stripper. I'm good stripper. I'm your stripper. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go home. Bye bye now. Bye, Daniel. I'll see you around. Daniel also uploaded an interview at Panera Bread with a man named Dylan discussing his ambitions and controversial views on international conflict resolution. September 16th brought even more drama to the table. Daniel was seen near Folsom Field yet again, later claiming on his community- I, I fully support dropping a third nuke on Japan for anime. No, I'm just kidding. Community <laughs> tab to have been removed by security. It turned out that he was actually arrested for third degree assault after an altercation with the security guard at Folsom Field with the intention to meet Dion Sanders on stage. Videos of his arrest appeared on Reddit showing him restrained and escorted by police. Bro, it's Daniel Larson. <sighs> Holy shit, Daniel Larson. No fucking way! Take out his ass. Holy shit. Oh my god. They're fucking taking him down. Reddit post confirmed his jail booking, and Colorado law indicated a potential 18-month prison sentence for third-degree assault. On the 18th, a Boulder County Jail live stream was terminated early due to inappropriate behavior by some attendees. I'm gonna expel someone named Warren from the WebEx. Excuse Mr. Sasa for disrupting. Yeah, sir, it's not on this end. My, uh, my live thing says excellent, and it's in the green. In court and expel him from court as well. Mr. Rosenbach, have you had a chance to talk to Mr. Larson yet? Okay, he has an audience that is uh, chiming in on WebEx. So I'm going to ask if you could have a chance to talk to him so we can. Uh... Yep, Cosmic, that's the only way he's not going to lose his feet is if he goes to fucking jail for a while. And as much as I don't like Daniel, I hope that turns out to be the outcome so he doesn't lose his feet. You know, that is a little much, even for. Someone as much as I dislike, as much as Daniel, you know? Get things moving along. Okay. You all done, Mr. Larson? Okay. We'll call Mr. Larson's case and then we'll call. Is it the Kyle matter? Call the Kyle matter. Yes, sir. Mr. Larson, come on up. Mr. Larson, your case is 23M1704, People versus Daniel Larson and Mr. Larson are present. Out of custody and on bond, Mr. Rosenbach is here for the people. Mr. Larson, did you hear all that? I did, Your Honor. And is that how you want to resolve your case today, is you'll plead guilty to an added count um, uh, of count three of attempted third degree assault. It's a class two misdemeanor. I'd place you on 12 months of probation order 12 hours, uh, 48 hours of community service, anger management uh, classes, and a fine. Do you understand that? I understand that. Okay. Was anything promised to you other than from what I stated? 
out here in open court just now? No, Your Honor. Are you thinking clearly today? You have those ad blocker things? I got this. My neighbor keeps fucking putting AVG antivirus browser on her computer, and she's always like, she's always like, it came back. I'm like, I know, because you fucking downloaded it and installed it, goddammit. <laughs> yes. Are you under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's going on right now? No. You oh, yeah, Sinister. We live in the dystopian nightmare our fucking grandparents feared. There's a camera on every corner. Your fucking phone knows exactly where you are if your dumbass leaves on location. You know, all that shit. That We live in a dystopian fucking nightmare. We live in it every single day. This is the world that they told us would happen, and, well, we didn't listen, did we? And we probably should have. Your Honor. And I've also, Mr. Larson, been handed this <laughs> Rule 11 advisement form. This is a form that details the constitutional trial rights that you give up by pleading guilty. Uh, did you read through this form? I did. And do you understand this? Yes. Okay. I'm going to briefly go over your constitutional trial rights with you. I want to make sure you understand you don't have to plead guilty just because you've been made an offer. You have a right to a speedy and... Bro, pay for YouTube premium. You get YouTube music on your phone, and you can download all the songs and videos that you want to keep on your phone just in case you get somewhere where you have no internet or something like that. That $15 a month is worth every fucking penny. You get all kinds of free movies with it, too. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'd re I would recommend YouTube Premium. It's worth paying for. And a public jury trial. Now, if you go to that speedy and public jury trial, you'd have a right to, uh, you'd be re uh, presumed innocent throughout the entire proceedings. And the only way you could be found guilty is if the district attorney was able to prove to the jury's satisfaction beyond a reasonable doubt your guilt. Now, at that trial, you'd have a right to an attorney. If you couldn't afford an attorney, I would appoint one to represent you. Your attorney would be able to cross-examine and challenge all the DA's witnesses, would be able to subpoena witnesses to court, even if they did not want to come to court, and then you could testify in your own defense. Now, Mr. Larson, if you chose not to testify, if you decided to remain silent, I would instruct the jury. They couldn't hold that decision not to test. Get a VPN electric, and uh, it'll let you do that. Um, you know, you can change the country that you're in and shit like that. I paid for a VPN for a while, but I stopped because, you know, there's no real point. I don't pirate anything, so there's no reason for me to have a VPN, honestly. I don't have Netflix or anything like that. If I do if I do want to watch something on Netflix, I just go to one of them shady, you know, sites on the Internet where everything that the right link is a fucking virus, you know, the ones that kind of discourage everybody that's not tech savvy from being there. Justify that right to silence against you. Do you understand that? I understand. If you went to trial and lost, you'd have a right to an appeal. When you plead guilty like you're doing right now, you waive or give up those constitutional trial rights. I understand. Do you have any questions for me about your constitutional trial rights? No, Your Honor. Is anybody threatening you, pressuring you, or coercing you to get you to waive your constitutional trial rights and plead guilty? No, Your Honor. You are pleading guilty to attempted third degree assault. Attempt is a violation of 18-2-101 of the Colorado Revised Statutes. Third degree assault is a violation of 18-3-204 of the Colorado Revised Statutes. A class two misdemeanor is 100, carries a maximum penalty of 120 days in jail and a $750 fine. Do you understand that? I understand. Do you have any questions for me about your constitutional rights, the charge you're pleading guilty to, or the maximum penalty here? No, Your Honor. Mr. Larson, to the charge of attempted third degree assault, a class two misdemeanor, how do you plead guilty or not guilty? Oh, no, Fruit, do you? I, I'm 100% of the, of the mindset that if you own a game, you can pirate it. Like, I'll pirate Doom Eternal on the PC because I own it on the Xbox, and I feel like, you know, I don't feel bad. You know, I bought it when it first came out when it was like $75, you know. I don't really care that I pirated it to finish the game on my computer, you know. Guilty. Guilty. I will accept your guilty plea and looking at your demeanor here in court, Mr. Larson, and your responsiveness to my questions, I am going to find that your guilty plea is knowing, voluntary, and intelligent, that it is free from threat and coercion, and that you understand the maximum penalties and the elements of this charge. I will dismiss permanently counts one and two, enter a conviction only on the added count three, and regarding sentencing and a factual basis, uh, and I am familiar with the facts of this case, Mr. Rosenbach, that took place at the Folsom Field. Um, what do you want to tell me? I don't have too much to add. Okay. Um, yeah, the, I'll show you what it's like for Daniel in jail. Here, I'll, I'll pop this one up on there. Let's see. Yeah, th this, this is what happens to Daniel in jail. 
Wow. Okay, I don't want you filming me then. I don't give a fuck. Oh, I didn't ask you. Matter. You're on our channel now. You, you, okay, well, you guys just. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> Do you guys see what I mean, though? Ugh. No, you don't see what I mean. I was, I was told by the CEO of another company that I work for. That you can stay inside of a, a different company that you don't work for. You are retarded. Wow, that's rude. Okay, I don't care. Freedom of speech. That, that is true. But it is very, very rude for you to, for you to say that. My boss is over there if you'd like to talk to him. Well, I did talk to him. Okay. Like, I don't know if you guys think this is a funny joke. I'm in training. So, I, like, I'm, I was told by the CEO of both companies to go live on the media for proof, okay, and they're them fucking nasty ass fingernails of his friends with this location they're under sponsorship and to say thank you for everything that they're doing and the free mail because of the sponsorship they've already verified that now you guys want to harass me and we've already we've already verified because well, the cops are coming. Free. You can tell the cops I'm harassing you. Nobody's scared of jail, so. That's all I'm saying. Well, I mean, you could trespass me all you want. I'm doing nothing wrong. Okay, well, you'll be trespassing when the police come. Then I will trespass you from all the. Trespass me? I don't give a fuck. Columbia Records. Fuck and all Columbia Records. I don't care about Columbia Records. And we will never come back to this location. And Good. And I just want to make clear, I did say, I don't know if there is restitution to be reserved, but I did reserve restitution. Okay, I see that. Thank you. I will find there's a factual basis for the plea. Uh, now, Mr. Larson, you don't have to say anything to me, but this is your formal sentencing hearing. Is there anything you want to tell me? Uh, yes. What color you paint your nails, Josie? You know, this may sound kind of gay, all right, but every man, at least one in his, once in his life, should get a manicure. Because they trim off dead skin and shit like that, and after they do one manicure on your fingers, your fingernails and the—I mean, your skin grows back different, and it looks better forever. So always get at least that done at least once in your life. Yes, Your Honor. Go, go, go ahead. During the um, day of the um, situation, uh -huh. my—I didn't want to hurt anyone or um, cause any major issues i was supposed to um be at the event and i um was told by security that i had to leave and i was supposed to be working hands-on at the event but i was never given the um vip pass to get through first okay and so um, there was like a complete miscommunication and I panicked. Mm -hmm. And I, when the security card came up to me and told me to leave and I refused trying to explain, the security guard tried to put hands on me to remove me. And that is when I put my hands up and he took that as assault. And um, that's, what led to my arrest okay um in the future mr larson even if someone has a misunderstanding or you have an expectation of what's supposed to happen you're not allowed to put your hands on people i understand your honor all right well hopefully you'll get something out of this probation um but for the next 12 months um you have that 120 days of jail hanging over your head uh i will order 48 hours of community service no weapons uh, the mandatory protection order continues. Uh, anger, I will order an anger management evaluation and any treatment that they recommend. And I'm going to continue with the uh, condition of stay away from Folsom Field. It'll take a few minutes and we'll give you information on uh, that probation, where to check in with probation and the clerk. Do you have any other questions for me? I do. Okay, go ahead. Um, since Folsom Field is a part of the CU University campus, mm -hmm. 
do I have to stay away from the entire campus or could I just Folsom Field, just Folsom field so if I wanted to I can reapply for college absolutely okay Thank you, Your Honor. All right, good luck to you. After his release on September 19th, Daniel resumed posting and went live during a bus ride where he was recognized. He explained his arrest to a fan in the live audience, alleging misuse of his fan base by security guards and a misunderstanding about his student status. Yeah, yeah. Are you actually student at CU Boulder? Not anymore, no. Rub. Trolls got me. Like man, yeah. So where are you headed to right now? I'm heading back to Denver. Yeah. So how did I like, get you man? Like, bad. Well, I was supposed to be working at the CU game this weekend. And from my understanding, somebody, someone at school called the security on me and then claimed that I was causing a scene when I clearly wasn't. And then the security told me that I had to leave the school campus but I had a dorm on campus. So I can't just leave campus if I'm a student and I have a dorm. And then the security guy, rather than verifying with anyone or getting on the rocky talkie with anyone, told me I was a liar, called the older sheriff on me and then got me arrested. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, thanks, it was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. The 21st saw the release of images and footage of his arrest, including the... You know what was funny, man? Like, 15 years ago or so ago, I was in jail, right? And there's this fucking... Uh, this uh, first responder who was a firefighter in there. And he got caught growing all kinds of weed and shit like that, like 100 plants and shit like that. And they gave him a five-year suspended inquisition of sentence... And I'm going to tell you right now, man, if he'd have been anybody else, they'd have thrown his ass in prison for like 10 years or something like that. No, he had more than 100 plants. It was over 100. See, that's something that a lot of people don't understand. The law for growing one plant to 99 plants is exactly the same. So if you're going to break the law and do that, grow 99 fucking plants, you know? Contents of his backpack and a video of him in a red prison suit. <laughs> So, right, so Daniel, so it sounds like, so we got some charges, right? They weren't press charges, right? Okay. So you're going to get charged with two counts of third degree assault. So Officer Forsberg is going to take you out to the Boulder County Jail. Okay. okay. So. Uh, what we're gonna do, we're giving you your phone. Do you have anything like IDs or anything else in your backpack? That... I have IDs, yeah. Okay. Do you can you tell us where they're at so we can get them out? Because the jail's um, not gonna take the whole back. They're they're Sorry. they're on the right. Um, from... Damn, Cosmic, were you in Texas or something like that? No, I don't. I don't know a lot of the states' laws. I I do know. Or are you in a different country? Front pocket of the phone. So like, this uh, one? no, it's this the one? on the. Thing hanging out oh, this, yes. Is there anything else? In yeah, whenever you drive through Kansas and you got a bunch of hydroponic shit, you gotta hold, you gotta cross your fucking fingers because if the assholes catch you there with all kinds of hydroponic shit, they act like you're, they, they give you intent to manufacture weed or something crazy like that. You know, when everything in your car is completely legal and there's no weed. Different states have different fucked up laws. Uh, no. There's just IDs and then there's like a key. So your bag is gonna be held temporarily and Officer Forsberg is going to give you a little green card that tells you instructions on how to get it back. It's going to be held for safekeeping until you get back at the okay. table of this part, since the jail will take your whole backpack. Okay. So okay. as part of that, we have to inventory your whole bag, um, just so that that's in the way, okay. since it'll be held. Is there anything in there that's illegal? Anything, um, any needles? Anything no. that's going to... There's, there's nothing. Nothing? Okay. Anything that we need to talk about before we go through it? No. Okay. All right. Um, well, like I said, we'll bring your phone and your IDs with you. Okay. Do you want to stand up? Yeah. Oh, we didn't stand up. I've had enough. Oh, no. I'll get it. 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 All right. Go ahead. Step in there and take a seat. Okay. And I'll take your shoes with us so you can have it. Yeah, I just checked his community tab. Yeah, he's back in there. 
said, I, need, I got a migraine and I think I might have food poisoning. He's such a pussy, man. He skinned his knee one time when he slipped on the ice and he went to the fucking hospital because he skinned his knee. You know, shit that a six-year-old, you know, would be like, ah, oh, mom, it hurts, you know, and then they wipe it clean, you know, and then be fine. Then he went to the hospital for it. You know, uh, like, will I come out today? Or I don't. I don't have that answer for you. Is it a misdemeanor? Yeah. Or what am I? Is, yes, it is a misdemeanor. Okay. So is it like I'll just get booked and you? then, or like, fingerprinted? So you are going to get booked and uh, oh, fingerprinted, but you're going to be staying there because you have to talk to the judge on Monday. Okay? Okay. okay. Alright. Same, dude. I gotta be puking or throwing up for like four days before I'll go to the hospital. You know what I always used to comment on the, the cops' weed posts whenever they arrested people for weed and shit like that? I'd be like, all right, dude, we get it, bro. You're gay. And that's what I'd always put. You know what I mean? <laughs> So you are being charged with two counts of third degree assault. So both of those are misdemeanors. You're going to be booked in Logic Boulder County Jail, um, and then they'll provide you a court hearing. So summons is going to say Monday at 1:30 because that's the date he will have it here. Okay. Um, you are also being issued with an exclusion number three for the whole University of Colorado. So I'm being trusted as a student. Correct. So I'm going to read this to you. All right. Okay. You are hereby warned and advised that you are excluded from and permitted permitted not to enter, remain, or return to the premises owned and operated by the University of Colorado for a period of a year. The violation of this exclusion will result in an arrest. The exclusion will expire on 4 16, 2024. So any campus property, you are not allowed on it for an entire year. Okay. If you review to come on that, you will get charged with trespass. Alright. Okay. Do you understand that? I understand that. Alright. Thanks, Daniel. Late September was marked by increased volatility in Daniel's behavior. He continued to post bomb threats against various targets and ranted about the police in a video. On the 30th, Daniel posted a short showing an injury and a video at the Colorado Festival recording children dancing. His interactions remained contentious as evidenced by a response to a post made by the Daniel Larson curator and a Reddit photo showing him filming children. October 3rd continued Daniel's string of challenges. He was apprehended and taken to the Jefferson County Detention Facility for failing to appear in court. He managed to avoid a court case in Westminster, but was confronted with an imminent $100 bill payment. And additionally, a video appeared online showcasing Daniel in a newly acquired jacket as he embarked on a job hunt. On October 4th, Daniel reiterated his schedule of five more court appearances within the month. He claimed to have been wrongly arrested, a statement unsupported by the accompanying video evidence. He bought a scooter and scheduled a housing appointment at DDRC, also starting a new YouTube channel titled Daniel Larson 2024. On October 5th, he revealed on his community tab that removing his sock had painfully peeled off a layer of skin from his foot, describing the sensation as tender and expressing his intention to buy a cast. October 8th marked the termination. Damn, that sounds extremely incredibly painful, your sock pulling off your skin with it. I, I One bum said, throw, he, said, he, said uh, he said to me, he's talking about it, He's like, the first thing you got to learn as a homeless guy is you got to throw your shoes away. Because I was asking him about being homeless and shit. I was asking all about it. He said, throw the socks away or they'll stick to your feet. 
impersonation of his YouTube channel Daniel Larson 2024 due to impersonation allegations, prompting him to launch two new channels, Daniel Larson Freedom and Daniel Larson Management though it was unclear if he actually controlled both. He also created a new TikTok account under the name Daniel Larson Freedom and uploaded a video of himself riding a scooter in Golden, Colorado. In a startling revelation, he admitted to saving child, you know what I mean, on his phone for what he termed an investigation, leading to the confiscation of his phone. So one of the people that was impersonating to be Grace Vanderwall did send me video verification. Maybe Daniel's weird ass doesn't even take his shoes off when he sleeps. He probably just keeps his shoes and socks on while he sleeps or something. You never. There's got to be a reason for that to happen. You know, that, it's just something that we don't know about. Vacation, but the video verification that they sent me was a nude photo of a child. Um, when I tried to save that um, for investigation to show to Daniel McDougall, um, Daniel McDougall, the Secret Service agent, actually saw it on my phone and... Whenever, uh, you wear socks for long enough, they get all sweaty and filled with body grime, and eventually the socks will, uh, mold onto your feet because, you know, they're wet and sweaty, and the, the socks will, the, once they got that black, nasty slime on them, they'll stick to your, uh, your feet, and, you know, then... They stick to your feet. They become part of your feet. And then whenever he tried to pull his socks off, he pulled some of his skin off with it. And that's what I've heard happens. And I'm sure that's what happens. And I uh, didn't believe my story at all. And um, actually decided that he was going to confiscate my phone. So I might be charged for child be now because people who, are, who were impersonating to be Grace sending verification was sending me like actual child for verification. On October 10th, Daniel faced yet another legal hurdle as he received a court date for trespassing at the Colorado School of Mines after a physical confrontation captured live on TikTok. All the way, yeah, it was like one floor up and I, uh, I actually got trolled by another person, harassed, and it ended up in a fight. Place? Yes, with me and the other person. But not at the time, right? At, at that time when that uh, happened up there, yeah, and that's what led to the trespass. Yeah, Mouse, I, I don't, I don't understand his thoughts behind that. You know what I mean? I agree with you. You were by yourself. I wasn't by myself. No, not. I was up actually up there all night long that night. Right. Mm -hmm because I was homeless and it was Daniel's disgusting see Daniel's a compulsive liar my mom was the same way compulsive liars just fucking uh they lie even when there's no reason to lie they lie about shit that there was no reason in the world to tell a lie about you know what I mean and that's just how they are that's how their you know sick psychology works uh it, it was like early summer when that happened yes yeah yeah, and it, well, I know that it was like raining for like a couple days too. Yeah. So I um, got in a fight up there with uh, another uh, person. Yeah. Yeah. Shit, Lucas, I hope you get to feeling better. We all get the ups and downs, you know what I mean? I hope you're feeling better tonight. I hope my stream helps a little bit with that, you know? It's not true, Daniel. There wasn't anybody else there. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, they came up through the stairway. You told Officer Boyd they completely doesn't pay when he talked to you when you're in the ambulance that time. Uh, no. I, I said that there was another person that came up through the stairway and came across into the room and they saw me and it turned into an argument and then from there it turned into a fight. And then I guess he went into class because he went through and there was like another door, yeah. right? Yeah. So he went kind of, because he, no, it's not like this. You know, the fact that there's not a secret society that disposes of people like Casey Anthony really shows that we live in a society full of fucking pussies, doesn't it? You know, I mean, for real though. But he came up and then came across. My guess is he came either to the cars up above or into, yeah. But that's what happened. So when you say fight, what do you mean fight? Um, not like, it, it was basically harassment, like straight up harassment. But what do you mean by that? 
different people mean different things, so. Yeah. yeah. So he saw me and he, he tried to put a hand on me. Um, I don't know. I don't, I, to be honest, I really don't know. Okay. Um, it was just some random person claimed they saw me from social media and they said I wasn't supposed to be here. And then it turned into an argument and then he tried to put hands on me to remove me. He looked like a student. Yeah. He looked like student aged. Yeah. And I put my hand up to block and then it just turned into. Hey, Jack, I'll smoke some of this fucked up resin on smoke and I'll do that with you too. Yeah, it sucks. I'm completely out of bud. It is what it is, though. Tomorrow, it'll be good, though. I won't have bud for a couple of days, and it'll make me uh, be less lazy and clean shit and all that stuff that I need to do anyway, you know? Kind of escalation from there. Long story short. Okay. That's like the shortest version I can give you because it gets more complicated. Okay. So what Officer Boyd told me, you told him, was that you were upset that day because of, did you have court that morning, right? I did In not. Denver? Uh... Either no. that morning or the next morning? Uh, it was... I... That might have been, like, another time I talked to him because I've talked to him before. Um, the night that I was in the ambulance was a completely... Yeah, that was a different, that was a different day, I, yeah. I totally understand that. So, I'm, I'm just talking about the wall thing, so... But he said, um, he said he didn't run into you until you were in the ambulance for that underwater. Yeah, yeah. Because he said during that... During that time, time... What you said... I'm gonna buy some beer pretty soon. I've been, I've been having a feeling like I want to drink like a 12 pack or something. So I think I'm gonna buy some beer here in a couple of days. I haven't drank in like two years. I don't drink very often. Was it you were upset because of court? You had court that day or the next day? I don't think I had court that week, but I was getting ready for court like in the next week to two, sometime within that. Hey Ben, you have some. Um, You're doing county, right? Okay. What's the question? The, so, the, when, when do I have court or like when oh, am I available? I'll talk to you when I, when I get to you, okay? Okay. Just hold on. What's the, what's the, um, yeah, that works. Well, you know, our alcohol cu culture here in America is unique because in other countries they let people drink beer and they're like 12 years old and stuff like that and they learn to responsibly drink. Whereas Americans, you know, when you're a teenager, you're like, all right, I'm going to drink 45 beers tonight and try and die, you know, when you're like 16 years old at those parties and shit. You know, that you're not supposed to be at. You, you know what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. Like That's why we have such a bad alcohol problem. It's the way we look at it. Hey, what's your phone number? Um, it is 720. Okay. All right. Here's a summons. Okay, this top portion is personal information. Okay. Okay. And here's your draw collector. ID card. This is the information I pull off from that. You are being charged with trespassing in municipal court. Okay. okay. It's Golden Municipal Court over on uh, uh, 10th Street, 911 10th Street. Okay. Okay. Court date is uh, November the 6th. This year, 2023, okay. at 8.30 in the morning, okay? Okay. If you have a problem with that court date, there'll be information on the back of the copy I'll give you that you can call and reschedule it. If you don't show, a bench warrant will be issued out for your arrest, okay? Okay. All right. Any questions? No. All right. Let me just sign here. Sign your name there. Okay. Right here, above that yellow block. I like a good apple wine. Apple wine is really good. I like apple wine. And I spoke to you, remember, about two weeks ago, same place. Shit, Sarah. Back in the day at the 99 cent store, they had some uh, Australian wine. It had a kangaroo on it. 
And man, we bought like 50 bottles of that shit, and man, we got, all of us got so fucked up, it was awesome. <laughs> all right? Yeah. And I explain to you, again, you're not to be on campus. This is not a refuge or a homeless shelter place, okay? Okay. This is a university for students, okay? You're not a student? The next day, October 11th, saw Daniel embroiled in controversy after he took a pasta order from Noodles & Company that was not his, leading to a dispute. He captured the incident photographically, mistakenly believing the order, placed by another individual named Daniel with a different surname, was his. On October 14th, Daniel launched a new channel, Daniel Larson Management, Team Vandervolt News, and the next day he created another account. On October 16th, Daniel expressed concerns about a pandemic-like crisis predicted for 2025. On October 23rd, Daniel Larson found himself at the center of an unusual haircut episode. Believing one of the trolls to be his assistant, Daniel began his haircut with scissors but quickly transitioned to a razor, ending up with a reverse mohawk. <laughs> hey, old Grady. I finally got my haircut done. During this incident, the trolls fabricated a tale about their car being burglarized, later modifying their story to say the car was stolen. The escapade left Daniel with an unfinished haircut, a saga extensively captured on his TikTok account, Daniel Larson Freedom. Uh-oh. Yeah, that dumbass went to court like this, too. <laughs> When did they go? <laughs> they said they'll come back. Right, so... Okay, so your car... Okay, so your car got broken into yes. by somebody. Yeah, that's cool. When you were going to get your... The blow dryer, yes. The blow dryer, okay. Alrighty. So yeah, I need to see this for myself. So the window... The window's broken? Yes, the window was broken. Alrighty. And it's his car, too. Okay, they took it, they took it. Oh boy, I'm in so big trouble. Fucking hell. I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> Interestingly, these were the same trolls that were previously involved in incidents like the haagen incident and the fake security incident. The next day, on the 24th, with his new reverse mohawk, Daniel visited Boulder's city administrative offices to address his court issues. He attributed his distinctive haircut to inspiration from Arnold Schwarzenegger, imagining a scenario where Schwarzenegger was struck by lightning in the style of Albert Einstein. So, my inspiration behind this haircut I wanted it to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger got struck by lightning, just like Albert Einstein. On Halloween, Daniel appeared in court with his reverse mohawk. Accepting a plea deal, he was sentenced to six months of supervised- So wait a minute, the only Einstein that this dumb fuck knows about is young Einstein from that stupid ass movie from the 80s? Probation. Genius, and required genius, Daniel, genius. ...to undergo a mental health evaluation. He announced a performance at the Jingle Bell Ball, listed Grace as his girlfriend on probation documents, scheduled a probation meeting, and was faced with $1,000 in fines. On the 9th, Daniel posted a video where he seemed to be yelling at someone or something. The context of this outburst was not entirely clear, as it took place in a nearly deserted area with only a few cars driving by, one with a passenger holding a coffee cup. Get the 
Get the fuck out of here! I will call the fucking police! The evening of November 10th brought an intense moment for Daniel at a Panera Bread in Westminster, Colorado. At around 8.22 p.m. in his time, he had a public meltdown that caught the attention of both onlookers and the managers he was communicating with on Discord. This event was eerily reminiscent of the haagen incident that- If he doesn't play this, you can guarantee goddamn tea I'm gonna go bring up this video and play this shit occurred about six months earlier, which you can revisit in part two. Prior to the meltdown, it was reported that a group of trolls had been following Daniel around various locations, including Dave and & Buster's and Target. Earlier in the night, he had posted what appeared to be an official document from Dave & Buster's announcing his ban from all of their locations. You guys need to shut the fuck up! All right, I'm gonna bring up the damn the Panera Bread incident because it looks like it's not he's not it's not gonna play it. So here, hold on one second, give me a second. I gotta go to this other one. All right, let's watch this shit. No, I'm not. Those people are causing the situation. Stop fucking telling me, bitch. You're cursing me. You know, <laughs> I'm not putting hands on you. I'm not putting hands on you. Try me. Try me. Try me. Try me. Try me, bitch. Try me, bitch. Try me, bitch. Try me, bitch. I will fucking murder you. I will fucking murder you, bitch. Look at this crackhead. <laughs> I can go right fucking ahead! I can go right fucking ahead! Fans are leaving my location, bitch! Fans are leaving my location, bitch! 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 104 beside the street. Fans are leaking my location! I'm in danger! I've been recording. Fans are leaking my location! I'm fucking famous! Yeah, Daniel pretty unhinged in that one. This this is after that. I'm pretty damn sure this is after that, this video we're watching right now. I don't think he showed the video. I'm calling the police on you. I have you on camera.
The legitimacy of this document was uncertain, but Daniel accepted it as true. Given his history of being banned from various establishments, it was feasible that Daniel could have received a chain-wide ban from Dave & Buster's. The peak of the Panera Bread incident was captured by a bystander. In the video, Daniel was seen in a heated argument with two employees who were attempting to escort him off the premises. He resisted, at one point even hurling a round table towards them. As he loudly protested about fans leaking his location, one of the employees called the police. Daniel adamantly denied any physical aggression when warned about potential assault charges. In a distressing turn, he began punching himself repeatedly and screaming, leaving the employees at a loss and merely recording the unfolding drama. For a brief moment, Daniel appeared to raise his arm threateningly towards the employees, but then stopped himself. As the situation escalated, an employee's raised voice led Daniel to hit himself again and sit back down, all the while vehemently denying any assault. Throughout his outburst, Daniel used a racial slur and asserted that he had a lawyer. No, I'm not. Don't. Hey, Sid, how are you doing? I'm going to skip past this because we just watched this. Da -da 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 -da. All right, there we go. His own punches. Eventually, the police arrived and spoke with him. Surprisingly, he was not arrested, but he claimed that Panera Bread management had banned him from the establishment. Press charges. Just because somebody came in here. No, because you tried to assault. I never assaulted you. Did you press someone physically? Oh. I'll have to I never. To you. I never put hands on you. you, you okay. Daniel's too fucking stupid to understand that if you. If you act like you're going to hit somebody, that's considered assault. It's also called menacing as well, depending on how they want to charge you for it. Hey, so that gives you the right to put hands on me? What? You put, you try to put hands on me. I put my hands up to block you. My entire family is going to be pressing charges. I have investigators. I have people that will like literally shut this place down. I'm doing absolutely nothing. My fucking face is bleeding because of you. Punching yourself in the face. No, because you 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 try to press charges on me. My fucking family's terrified. Okay. Well, when the police get here, you'll be safe. Uh, I'm not going to jail. Yes. Because I didn't do anything. I have it all on film. I'm a fucking celebrity. You treat me like shit. Okay, I'm sorry. You want to try to murder me is what you want to do. No, you don't. You you want to press charges. You've already stated that. I never threw a table at you. You were across the room. You were standing right where you stand right now. I just moved the table to try to create a barrier so you couldn't put hands on me. I have my lawyers ready to leak this all over the internet. There was somebody trying to actually do a drive-by shooting. That's why I came in here. Celebrity. I have rights. I have rights to protect myself. So you're saying you're saying I can't fucking protect myself. So you go ahead, put hands on me. Cut me with the I hate when he says protect. Protect. He puts an extra syllable in it. I hate it. I hate when he says protect. It's protect, not protect. -a, like he says. I hate it. I hate it. You're out of control right now. I'm not out of control. Okay? I'm not out of control at all. I will make sure this goes all over Hollywood. I will make sure TMZ, 9 News, everybody covers this. As a matter of fact, the last time I was in jail, they actually cleared the case got it all lifted and all of the jail footage was leaked the police officers lost their job because i'm going to tell the police that you tried to assault me tina i need you to leak this all over the internet i have every single right to record my safety stand up uh, uh, can I can I talk? Plug, plug your stuff and stand up. Can I talk to you for a moment? Shoot. As long as you're standing up while I'm plugging your phone and walking out of the store. I will be more than happy to do that. 
I, uh, there's actually a very serious issue that has happened and I need to report it. Okay. And I've already called. So what? Punch yourself in the face because of that. So I'm famous, okay? I'm, I've already got investigations going this for me. I'm a senior songwriter. Okay, I have. When's the last time you used drugs or alcohol? Today? I don't use drugs and I don't use alcohol. I will say differently. I always have dry eyes. No, it's not dry. You'll be dilated pupils while you're inside sitting in a light. That's because I'm always on my phone. Because mm -hmm. they would have changed back already because you've been off your phone for almost a minute. That's how the eyeballs work. I don't do drugs and I don't. Yeah, schizophrenics get completely tweaker eyed because their brains are like tweakers. That's why it's not good a new meth. Whenever your whenever your pupils are all big like that, you're essentially an insane person. Don't do meth, kids. Don't do alcohol. Mental health issues have you been diagnosed with? Just autism. Just autism? Yes. Sure. Do you have any weapons? Yeah, the the old Chicago is one of my best videos. I covered that. It was really good. I thought that one was really good. That's just like uh, Tibbs was really good. The video I made with with Cyrax and also. Crack Rock Chris, Mr. $5,000 Tough Guy. That one was really fun, too. Sonia, I need to know about? Uh, I don't. You, you can don't reach in any pockets. Back. You can leave that alone. But the, I came in here because I was having an issue with... I don't need to do that anymore. Okay. I came in here because I was having an issue with a troll slash hater in my fan base community outside threatening me with a gun. Okay, they were threatening me to do drive-by shooting along this shopping center. What's your first name? Daniel. Daniel? My last name is Larson. I don't know who the people... What's your birthday? It's 11 15 98 Yes. What's your phone number, Daniel? I don't know because I just got a new number. You know what we used to do in California, Critty? I've done meth and I know what it smells like and so what I, I used to do in California is after I did that I'd walk up to people who were tweaking and it had that nasty meth smell to them that straight up weird chemical odor and I'd say some shit like they know or we're watching you or you know some shit like that you know something cryptic that would scare the fuck out of them because they're a tweaker you know it would be funny why are the tables turned over Daniel? I uh, the manager tried to put hands on me to escort me outside I don't think that was a problem yet <laughs> And it's because you're interacting like a Looney Tunes. I I felt I felt endangered. And Here's the thing about meth, all right? Tweakers are shit, but every now and then there's a tweaker you can trust to do things, and you know is still a decent person. Now, crackhead on the other, you know, because twenty five dollars gets a tweaker high for a day. Now, a crackhead on the other hand is worse than a tweaker because twenty five dollars will get them high for about fifteen minutes. You know, so. Tweakers are better than crackheads, you know. It's, uh, you're not winning a big prize being better than a crackhead, you know. But tweakers are better than crackheads. So I, so I put get my, off of there. I, I knocked down the tables to try to create a barrier, so I could be on one Daniel, side and they I'm could be on the other. Real with you. That's a piss poor excuse, but. But I, I felt in danger. So you punched yourself in the face a bunch of times. The manager was threatening to press charges on me. So if you come in here flipping tables over and punching yourself in the face and they say leave and you say no, and they say we're going to trespass you and you say no, that's trespassing. Where'd all these fans come from? They just found you out of nowhere? I I have, I'm a singer-songwriter. I have music on no, iHeartRadio, um, Roaring Thunder. It has, okay. yes, it has over, it has over... Play it for me. Five million views right now. This is my entire YouTube. Well, the list goes on and on. You're scrolling so fast. And I'm even dating this person. There's even. Well, where do you live at? I'm currently homeless. You're homeless, but you got five million views on YouTube. Don't they pay for that? Uh, they do, but I'm dealing with a family crisis, and a lot of my money paid. is going to the family crisis. I'm extremely, extremely famous. Oh, yeah, around here, last time someone tried to get me to do some cocaine, they pulled this white powder out, and I just started laughing at him. I said, I don't want that bullshit. Real cocaine is hard as a rock, man. It's so hard that people put it in weed grinders to break it up kind of hard, man. Like, if you're using a fucking razor blade, it'll shoot halfway across the room hard, you know? 
Yeah, that's the real stuff. You don't get that anywhere but like the West Coast. What's your What's your Do you have a TikTok? I do have a TikTok as well. Yes. Oh. My my handle something freedom is um no it is yeah it's Daniel Larson Freedom. Wow. Someone sent that to our TV say and gave that handle that that TikTok. Hey Insidious, how you doing? Yeah, you're gonna have a big party. Are you part of some I'm, group? I'm 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 getting banned. It's a bunch of time. I'm getting banned from so many places. I'm struggling. <laughs> Or That's the issue. Of all of them. Like I was saying, because fans are coming in, trolls. I don't have security. I don't feel security. like that's the issue. I feel like it's the yelling at staff, flipping tables over, punching yourself See, until you bleed. I only did that because the manager yeah, was. That literally makes zero sense. He he threatened me. He threatened to be. He threatened to press charges on me, and I knew I was innocent. You weren't. He asked you to leave, and you said no. I said trespassing. You're guilty. Right. Guilty as shit right now, bud. Right, and I I just told him like I don't feel safe. Please call the police. So you punched yourself in the face a bunch of times. He said he was just against him. I felt in danger. Sports him. I did. Yes. Why'd you do that? Because if you look at it from my perspective, okay. I come in here out of concern. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Hello? Okay. Bob is doing nothing to help. And I will fucking go to his house with a gun and I will kill him. He's basically leaving me to die. Right now. There's there's actual cars right now following me. Planning a murder. Okay, and Bob is being a fucking murderer because he's doing nothing to help. Okay. The jackass, excuse my language, but the manager, okay, decided they were going to ban me. On November 14th, Daniel requested birthday wishes from his followers as he approached his 25th birthday on the next day. He also mentioned plans for a new haircut and was spotted by a fan in Golden, Colorado. His birthday on the 15th was marred by the news that Bob was supposedly battling cancer. Although these rumors are probably untrue, they remain unverified. On November 30th, Daniel once again faced court and was sentenced to 12 months probation, 48 hours nah, of- Nah, Bob was banging his grandma, not his mom. <laughs> community service, anger management classes, and a fine for assaulting a security guard by Folsom Field. On December 2nd, Daniel made a concerning comment about planning to rob a bank and commit suicide at Lowe's. And on December 3rd, he posted images in a video on TikTok revealing his stay at a homeless shelter. On the 8th and the 9th, Daniel experienced a series of unsuccessful meetups orchestrated by individuals posing as Grace and Tina Vanderwall. He was led to believe that he would meet them at various Denver locations, such as King Supers, Regal Movie Theater, Dave & Buster's, and the Four Seasons Hotel. Due to his TikTok account being private and a break from his YouTube community page, documenting events prior to the 9th was pretty difficult. However, Daniel recorded his interaction with the police at King Supers and then live-streamed his wait for the Vanderwalls at various places, including an encounter with security at Dave & Buster's. On December 8th, Daniel dealt with the police at King Supers due to customer concerns about his extended stay and phone conversations. He uploaded the incident to his YouTube page on December 9th. That day, he was arrested and later released on bond. Believing that he would meet the Vanderwall family, Daniel continued his search the next day, live-streaming his efforts and interactions at multiple locations. Throughout his journey, he was repeatedly deceived by Vanderwall impersonators regarding their supposed locations. These impersonators infiltrated his texts, and YouTube livestream comments, and at a movie theater to watch Napoleon, Daniel, who didn't have a ticket, was unexpectedly allowed in after receiving a fake code from trolls. Oh, let's try this code. So, 272915. Yeah. Right, so that'll be in meeting number 8, which will be down that way. Okay. All right, perfect, thank you. All right. Aw, he 
really thought he was going to meet Christ that night. That's so sad. <laughs> They found the ticket. That's weird. So I put it all together. On December 10th, while at an Olive Garden, Daniel went live several times to apologize to various people. But unfortunately, right after, another notable incident occurred. Daniel tried to reserve a table at Olive Garden for himself and Grace, but was removed from the premises after attempting a citizen's arrest on everyone inside and triggering the fire alarm, encouraged by his chat. This incident, coincidentally, also happened on the one-year anniversary of one of his most infamous major outbursts, the December 10th incident. The live streams are available on his YouTube channel. Yep, I can confirm. Man, let me tell you what, whenever I was going through all the footage to make my fucking video on the, the Olive Garden incident, man, 50% of it was him just staring into his fucking phone saying, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, every now and then he'd say, mm-hmm, and he'd look, he'd look at it real fucking crazy, and then... Then, you know, they're telling him what to believe, and then they, <laughs> I don't know, it was pretty funny. Okay, and yep, FBI vehicles are here. I see them outside. All right. Okay, now the managers and everybody came back out. They have three managers on duty. Phone. Yes. It says they're your uncle and that they want to send you uh, money for the cash app. I don't have cash app, so I don't know if that's true or not. Okay, so I'm just going to tell them now. Yeah, just okay. tell them now. Thank you. I've been in here numerous of times, okay? Um, I am dating another celebrity, okay? They have a management, they have a security team. They are already here. Okay, so they're already here. They're out in the parking lot. I have an FBI investigator. I work for the Secret Service. They're investigating as well. Um, they're investigating my entire fan base to make sure that, like, I am safe and I don't get pulled anywhere I go. And the, they, they are outside being, and apparently they're being, like, straight up harassed by your employees. Um, they are saying that it's out back where your kitchen is. We have Olive Garden is the McDonald's of of Italian food, and I mean that as an insult. Reason to believe that the uh, documents that the uh, manager was printing off is nude photos of me from um, a online um, troll website. The Okay, I just got sent a picture of the police holding Grace to a car outside. I have, I have full, yep, I have full proof of Grace being assaulted. Coming in, pictures and everything. Where, okay, I mean, give me one more second. What a pathetic fucking coward. You'd have figured he would have went right out the back of the studio and got to see what was happening with this beloved. But he didn't because at the end of the day, Daniel's a chicken shit pussy and there's nothing that's ever going to change that. He's a coward, like that one dude at Planet Hollywood said. He's a fucking coward. I'll play that after this. That's happening outside somewhere. I'm performing a citizen's arrest, so the FBI is outside. We have, I have more than enough photos coming in. Okay. Who are you arresting? I'm arresting every single person here. I'm arresting all employees. Are you telling me that you're a celebrity? Yes. Okay, and do people take pictures of celebrities, right? Right, but you were back in back. Yes. Printing off documents. I was? Y you you ha you said that and it's on video. I thought I was printing off documents? Yes. You're okay, so here's the here's the deal. We've been I'm gonna ask you to come over here actually. Over here. We've been very nice. Like that's what I'm gonna tell you. You're not filming me, correct? 
I am legally required to. No, you can actually just leave now. I don't have to leave. I am, the FBI is here. I have fucking photos. Okay, sir, this is what I'm gonna tell you. You're gonna calm down right now. You're gonna stop filming me, or I'm gonna call the police and they're gonna remove you from here. I know that's what you want. I know that's what you're famous for on TikTok, but we are not doing this. That, you're gonna curse at me again, or you're going to leave. I never cursed. Okay, sir. What I'm gonna tell you right now is you're gonna stop filming and you're going to leave, or I'm going to call the police right now. Go ahead and call the police. Thank you, I will. I just got sent pictures and photos of Grace being assaulted. I'm not gonna just sit here and call those photos fake. I got sent them from the fucking FBI. I'm gonna ask you again not to curse. There's children in here. I'm gonna ask you again. I have, I have photos. I need you to lower your voice. Hi, 7655 West I mean, family's right here. Um, he's accusing us of printing off documents and telling us he's gonna get my entire staff arrested. And at this point, I would just like him out of the building. His name is Daniel Larson. She knew it was TikTok, but she was a little excited, so it came out talk talk. You know how it is, and you know what I mean. When you're excited, it's hard to get shit to come out right sometimes. My name is Destiny Graham. I just got word from the FBI and uh, Rick Yorn, LBI Entertainment, that you are being sued. Okay. I just got notified that um, Rick Yorn at LBI Entertainment, who is the CEO, has called the head manager and the CEO of yeah. all Olive Gardens, and you're fired. They, okay. They're working on firing you. I like how in uh, the the black dude at the one uh, hotel was like, he, he called it Tiki Talkie. I thought that was funny when he said Tiki Talkie, your Tiki Talkies. <laughs> they might be on their way, but don't know yet. Wow. So in other words, um, the police are also trolling along with you. So, wow. That's a bunch of information now that I needed. Wow, thank you. You're so welcome. I'd rather have a Whopper than a Big Mac any day, straight up. The police are now trolling as well. <laughs> the police might show up. They don't even know. Hmm. Okay. I also, also the guy with the curly hair, the guy with the curly hair that was sitting next to me here, he's undercover. So we have more than enough proof. The guy with the curly hair that was sitting right next to me, right here, was undercover. Emergency, we need you. All right, you can ruin Burger King for me, but in payment before you even tell me, I'm going to ruin Taco Bell for you. Taco Bell meat comes in plastic bags, and they put it in hot water, and they heat it up. It's absolutely disgusting. The beans are powdered and dry. They're dehydrated beans. And then the fucking sour cream's reduced fat sour cream. And it's in this disgusting gun that they shoot it out with and shit. And it's all incredibly unsanitary and gross. It's it's nasty. Taco Bell's gross. I still eat there every now and then, but yeah. Um You know, Pizza Hut, when I worked there, there's a, it's 100% food. There's nothing weird or nasty about Pizza Hut. It's all food. Only thing is, where I live, the Pizza Hut ain't worth the fuck. So when I have to, get, I don't get to eat Pizza Hut until I get, like go visit a city somewhere or something like that.
Animal style fries. That's my shit, man. I'm surprised In and Out isn't everywhere by now. You know what I mean? They need to work more on expansion. Like, Jack in the Box is starting to take off. It's starting to make headway into territories that it wasn't in for a long time. You know, I feel bad about Jack in the Box, you know. I mean, I, I feel bad for the people that died from the E. coli. But at the same time, that's the meat processor's fault. That's not fucking Jack in the Box's fault. You know what I mean? That's not their fault. They're calling 911 again. They're calling 911 again. And now now they're joking that that was actually funny. Now the managers are joking that that was funny. The managers are the ones escalating this. They are saying... Yeah, I remember when Little Caesars was like uh, $4 for a fucking pizza. What are they now, like 7 8 Shit, there might even be nine, damn. Daniel, we have been advised that you need to run. I'm sorry, say Jesus. Nice job trolling! That's pretty funny! I have proof that you guys were back in the back printing off my nudes off of a website. I have the Federal Bureau of Investigation in contact with me. I have an investigation going on. What are you talking about? I don't have to. No, you don't. No, you don't. You're being ridiculous at this Oh, yeah, I know how my hot dogs are made. They make that disgusting paste, and then they fill it into either intestines, which is, you know, good, or they put it in that fake fucking gelatin base, you know, like the cheap hot dogs. I can only get the expensive hot dogs. Like, it has to be uncured beef or something like that for me to eat it. Those little dollar hot dogs aren't even food for me, man. <laughs> How are we doing? Um, I'm waiting for the police to show up. Okay. What's going on tonight? I will not say until the police show up. I'm filing for a citizen's arrest. Okay. Do you need any medical attention? I don't. I don't. No? No? Okay. Hi. Hi. Daniel? Um, yes, I do. I I have information um, that is extremely important with the managers here. I am. The reason everything's getting shitty is because we need to use something other than fossil fuels. We can barely suck the shit out of the ground fucking fast enough to give 10% of the world's population a decent life. You know, we need to go to nuclear power. It's really stupid that they don't. We're preventing a golden age by not doing it, you know. Um, my name is Daniel Larson. Um, I'm a upcoming celebrity. I'm dating another singer-songwriter. Named hey, John, how you doing? I'm Grace Vanderwall. I, I was going to call you the C word, you know, because you guys use it as a term of endearment over there, but I didn't want anybody to get mad at me, right? <laughs> I'm in contact with her management, LBI Entertainment, and the CEO of LBI Entertainment, Rick York. Okay? I am also in contact with Grace's... Uh, Grace Vanderwalls, because that's a celebrity I'm dating. I'm in contact with her security and her parents, okay? Now, I have proof from her security, okay, th um, which is based out of California, that the managers here were, I have a subreddit called the Daniel Larson subreddit, and the managers here who actually know me, I've been coming here for months, okay, were leaking my new photo. Shit, they're going to automate everything with damn robots. No one will have a job and we'll all be welfare leeches on the government under universal basic income. And then we'll all pretty much have everything because the robots will work 24 hours a day. But nobody will be happy, you know, because, you know, the chase, going after something is more impo important than the end goal. Like, imagine everybody just be given a house, given a boat, you know, all that bullshit. It'll be, 
it it, it won't be a fun world, you know. It'll it'll be a nightmare. It's what Nietzsche was talking about, but you know, the bad one, the bad world, you know, not the good one. Photos <laughs> from one platform to the subreddit. And then I started getting notified from Grace Vanderwall's security. Um, we were trying to get a reservation for tonight. And they, the managers here, wouldn't let us book the reservation. And I was already... Oh, there'll be jobs like if you want to work. There was a book written in the 1800s by some Jewish guy. And it pretty much described what we're going through right now. I can't remember the name of it, though. But it was, it was a really good book. Someone stole that book from me. I don't know why. Getting my meal, everything. I was waiting for, yeah. Daniel then streamed again in a video titled Daniel Larsing filling out a police report at an Olive Garden. During this stream, a police officer gave Daniel a trespass notice, prohibiting him from Olive Garden for a year, and charged him criminally for pulling the fire alarm. He also received a court date of February 14th, 2024 at Jefferson County. Interestingly, an Olive Garden employee shared a photo on the same subreddit of Daniel inside with the officers. In the comments under the photo, the employee revealed that Daniel had secured a table for eight and was not- Shit, in Japan, they already have remote workers. And what you do is they have a, they put, you know, like uh, gloves and shit on. And then they, they use a robot arm, and then they stock shells with it and shit like that. You know, it's pretty neat. Japan, we need to get in on that, that kind of shit now as a country, you know, so we don't lose out on all that money to Japan and, you know, everyone else. Not banned from that specific Olive Garden. The next day, Daniel posted a now-deleted video of himself being ejected from a local chain restaurant during the live stream. In the stream, a restaurant employee confronted Daniel recorded him with his phone and even called him a derogatory i saw a really cool definition of corporation the other day it said a way to get a uh, personal financial gain with no personal responsibility and that is true you know if you think about it corporations aren't people man they should be able to ask for records immediately and they shouldn't have the protections of a human you know return you are retarded <laughs> Wow, that's rude. Okay, I don't care. Freedom of speech. That, that is true. The employee, whom Daniel's followers nicknamed Wine Chef Guy, was commended by many on the Daniel Larson subreddit for confronting Daniel, though others often joked about his resemblance to the rapper Yeet. The following day, Daniel's TikTok account was banned. To this day, Daniel still remains homeless, wandering the streets of Colorado, causing chaos in public areas and local businesses. His legal situation is still unfolding, and it's only a matter of time until we find out whether or not Daniel Larson will be spending time in prison. The interesting thing about Japan is, for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, nobody really believed in the Shinto gods, you know what I mean? They've had kind of a, a secular kind of mindset for a very long time there, you know, the people, not, you know, the emperor. <laughs> You ready for me? As the third part of the Daniel Larson documentary comes to a Let's watch some Lorne. I like Lorne. Let's watch some Lorne. You're beautiful. <laughs> hey, I'm glad you could come. Girl. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Bamboo is good, but hemp is better. Hemp makes seven times the amount of paper as trees and hemp grows back every year whenever we start using hemp for paper on a large scale you know and they can make boards out of hemp now too they put it together with epoxies and binders and they're twice as strong as pine boards pretty soon we'll be using hemp for everything just give it time because it's coming I drive. <laughs> 
Terrible. Really? How come? Oh, she was all right. Oh. Well, look, we got these new chairs. You have to sit down. I have to sit down? Yeah, look. It's a massager oh chair. God, it vibrates when you press the buttons. Look, oh my god. Yeah, flip the switches. Which one is it? Um, you can use either one of them. It tells you there's one for your butt, there's one for your lower back, and there's one for your upper back. I just felt my butt. I think. You can pretty much tell a difference when you press Holy, the Holy, yep, that's my butt. That feels butt. so good, right? <laughs> so, I thought you had blonde hair. Do you like it? I dyed it by I think, myself. I think it's pretty. Thank you. It's very pretty. We're left. Where's oh the my pizza? God. I was waiting to eat because I... Pepe is cool. But Wojak definitely got the more memes, you know what I mean? I think Wojak's kind of beat Pepe out, you know what I mean? Thought you were <laughs> there's Soy Wojak, Mega Cuck, so Soy Jack, you know, there's all kinds of different Wojaks. There's only a couple of different kinds of Pepes. Some. <laughs> well, I weren't bringing you any pizza. Well, weren't you going to bring me something? Well, yes, I was, and I did. Did you bring any condoms? Yes, I did. Where are they? Out in the truck. Well, what good are they going to do in the truck if we're in here? Well, yell at me, why don't you? <laughs> I haven't had a kiss yet. Oh, okay. Well, then what did you want to do? Well, I want to kiss first. And then what? Can I have a kiss first? Well, let's talk first. We just <laughs> okay. got here. <laughs> Would you like me to go on the truck and get my stuff? No, it's all right. No? You don't want your thing right now? The present I gave you? Well, what is it? Well, I can't tell you. That wouldn't be much of a present if I told you. Well, you can go get it in a little bit or something, okay? Okay. All right. <laughs> Are you nervous? A little bit. A little bit? Not as bad as what you thought you would be? Not as bad, but I still am kind of nervous. I'd rather, like, talk a little bit first and then, like, so I'm more comfortable, you know? That's, like, cool. Good. I'm really glad. <laughs> <laughs> I like seeing you in person. Yeah, I like seeing you, too. Good. So, this is getting hot. How come? Oh, because press the red button. It's like oh. heater too. <laughs> you gonna have a seat too? I actually, I like to sit on the edge of chairs. Do you? Yeah. Seem pretty comfortable there. Hi, sir. How are you? All right. How are you doing? What's happening? Not too much. Not too much. You a Boston fan? Well, actually, I don't even watch baseball. Oh, but it's a Boston cap. It's a Boston cap. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you up to tonight? Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot? No. Have fun, Electric. Have a good sleep. Well, I'll tell you, for the last several days, you've been up to a lot. You're a pretty prolific chatter there. You want to explain yourself? Not really. I'd never really. I've read the whole entire Holy Lornography. It's not really worth it, but it is funny because all he ever talks about is his dick, man. That's uh, half of the words in there. Him talking about his penis, I guarantee it. I was gonna do anything? You weren't really going to do anything. No. So you brought condoms. What else did you bring? I brought her a bracelet. A bracelet. And her. And she is how old? It's supposed to be thirteen. It's supposed to be thirteen. And how old are you? 37. 37. You have kids? Today. No, unfortunately. Yeah. I've got nieces, though. Nieces. That I think the world of. Yeah, you talk about your nieces in, in, in the chat here. And you talk about how you like to spoil the nieces and how you would like to spoil this 13 year old girl like you spoil your nieces. Yeah. Is this the way you spoil young women? No. Now, what's your name? This is what I was afraid of. You, what were you afraid Stupid of? Stupid move. What were you afraid of? Just because she was a nice girl. And she was a nice girl. You still haven't told me your name, though. It's Lauren. Lauren what? Armstrong. Armstrong. And where do you live, Lauren? In Nashville now. Nashville. What do you do in Nashville? Actually, I work at a construction company. And what do you build? He um, told uh, him. Actually, I just started there last week. He told Ramona, or one of his catfishes, that the whole time he was sitting in this chair, the heat was on because he was too much of a dumbass to turn it off. So he really is in the hot seat right now, you know, figuratively and metaphorically. I'm building right now, building a gym for a church. A gym for a church. Is that a good job? Yeah. Now, besides all this chat here, and we'll go through that in a minute, you also sent a whole bunch of pictures. Why 
Why would you think that's appropriate? It's not. It's not. Those are all your pictures, right? Is that all you do in your spare time? No. Hoopa, this is Lorne Armstrong. He is one of the most infamous predators on the internet. And uh, when he got out of prison, like, I think it was like eight or nine years ago, he tried to cash in off him being caught in this sting and shit like that. He's a real piece of work. This is Lorne. You ever get in trouble like this before? No, I've never done this before. You've never done it before? Have you ever met anybody in person who you first met online in a chat room? No. This is the first time. So yeah. what made you, all of a sudden, for the first time, get online, chat up a 13-year-old girl, and drive up from Nashville to meet her for sex? Well, I didn't... Lauren, you send her naked photos, you have an explicit conversation, and you bring condoms. What does that add up to? I know. At first, you seem like the good Samaritan, the protector. Don't tell me your last name. Don't ever tell anyone from the internet your last name, okay? Okay, why? Because there are some real weirdos on here sometimes, and they might try to go looking for you. So don't ever tell them your last name, your address, your phone number, the town you live in, or the school you go to. You're one of those weirdos. I mean, was that some kind of a ruse to gain her trust? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. So how did it go from, hey, be careful, don't give anybody your last name, to, hi, here's some naked pictures of myself and I'm coming over with condoms? I don't know. You don't know? Well, you must know something. I mean, help me to understand this. I don't know what why you don't know. I even did. You don't know why you did it? Well, I think I know why you did it. You did it because you wanted to have sex with a 13-year-old girl. I don't think that... No, what, what? I don't think that was it. You don't think it was it. Well, why don't you help me out? Why don't you tell me what it was then? What? Because I went, I wasted five years. White Boy Rick was the uh, guy that was selling cocaine for the bushes, right, I think? Of my life on the internet talking to girls that, I, that gained my trust. And she seemed like somebody I could trust. You could trust. So when you say you, you spent five years on the internet, what, getting taken advantage of by women? In what way? In every way. For instance? Um, I was up in Washington State. I started, that's when I started going on the internet. When you lived in Washington State? You started going on the internet, and what happened? I met a girl, and she said her name was Amanda James, and told me that, that her, her daughter was her niece and that she was watching her niece while well, she was actually had custody of her niece. And then? Well, three, uh, three years later, I moved back to Maine just to be close to her because she lived in, in Pennsylvania. And I didn't, I didn't date anyone. I didn't see anyone because of her. All right, so what happened? I got back to Maine, and I was talking to her on the phone, and she, uh, my sister wanted to say hi to her, and my sister had been on the Internet for a couple of years, and she was able to read people pretty good. And what happened? And she got on the phone with her, and she, uh, after she got off the phone, she was only on the phone with her for about two minutes, and she got off the phone with her and told me that... Uh, yep, yep, they caught one of their special little good old boys, Mr. Prosecutor, you know, and fucking they had to ban the show because, you know, they, it's okay for her to do that to peasants, but you come after one of our guys, you know, that's how that fucking worked, man. 
shows you the fucking double standard in the world, you know? She told me that she wasn't real. She wasn't real. She told me she was lying to me and she'd been lying to me all along. Did you ever meet this woman? Did you send her money? I sent her money. I sent her all kinds of Dale Earnhardt things. Dale Earnhardt things. Dale Earnhardt Jr. things. She was Dale. The know, race car driver. Yeah. And so because you got taken advantage by a couple of women on the internet, you thought it was okay to take advantage of a 13-year-old girl on the internet. No, I didn't. You didn't? No. I'm very happy that you talked to me before talking to anyone else, though. This way, you'll be safe. That's what I meant, too. I don't know how... You don't know how what? Lead to, I don't know how I let it lead to this. Well, here, here, let me take you down the road. This is how it went. You started with this. And then it goes to, so this is as thick as a telephone book, by the way, this chat. You started chatting with her when? Last month? So you've been chatting with this woman, this young woman for a month. And so it starts with you being the protective older brother type. And we flip through dozens and dozens of pages here. And ultimately, it builds into a very sexually explicit conversation. Right? I wish I were sticking it in you right now. You tell her to delete her archives after we stop talking again, okay? Why did you want her to delete her archives? Help me out. I didn't want to get in trouble. I didn't want her to get in trouble by her parents. I mean, this goes on and on and on. Do you think naughty thoughts about me before you go to sleep? You talk about getting married to her. Getting married? She's 13. Huh? I when she was 18. Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean she was 18? So I meant when she was 18. Well, you were going to marry her when she turned 18. But you're just going to have sex with her from the ages of 13 to, to 18 now. Are you excited about me or my penis? Did you bring anything else with you tonight? Uh, like what? Like anything? No. Nope. Food, alcohol? No. Nope. So just the bracelet and the condoms? Nothing else? What do you think ought to happen to you? Oh, here's a good one. Is Miss Vagina thinking about Mr. Penis? What is she thinking? What's up with that? What do you think ought to happen to you? Help me out. I think I should go to counseling to get off the internet. You should go to counseling and get off the internet. Did you ever say to yourself, hey man, I got a problem here? No, because I never thought I did. You never thought you did? Does this incident make you think that perhaps you have a problem? What are you going to do about it? I gotta do something, I can't do that. <laughs> what you going? Well, do you ever watch uh, television much? You ever watch a program called Dateline NBC? Well, there's something I gotta tell you. 
I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we're doing a story on a Now, you're free to walk out of this house right now. But if there's anything else you want to say, now would be the time to say it. Sheriff's office, down! Get down! On the ground! On the ground! Put your hands on your back, Put your hands on your back! What glorious things are we doing right now on YouTube? We got some snow crab legs that were sent to me by my YouTube fans. We're going to start by adding some butter to our pan. And then we're going to add a bunch of other ingredients. Cube of butter. What glorious things are we doing right now on YouTube? We got some snow crab legs that were sent to me by my YouTube fans. We're going to start by adding some butter to our pan. And then we're going to add a bunch of other ingredients. Cube of butter. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to cook up some delicious... So crab legs. My favorite was uh, there's a Netflix and chill predator and they took that one down and I've never been able to find it again. And there's another one where a dude was uh, sitting in his car at a restaurant he worked at and he's like, you know, and I thought it was a scam, you know, so I told her to meet me here because I knew it was a scam. And then you guys show up, you know, so it's obviously a scam. So I was right. And he was already a sex offender and shit and they fired him from his job. It was, it was a pretty good one, but I've never been able to find it again. It's going to be delicious. Now here's our butter. We're going to melt that in our pan and get it melted fried real quick. I'm going to watch that like a hawk. I don't want to burn it. Stove's not turned on. Yeah, Jessica, damn, his stove is cool and old. It's got push buttons on it. That's cool. Jessica is fucking acting this crazy at this point of knowing him. Can you imagine how crazy she gets whenever she gets comfortable around him? Jesus. Super hot, but it's hot enough. Because we're going to boil these crab legs, snow crab legs and dankness. See, while we're growing up some uh, crab legs, we're boiling them, I should say. We're going to crack them with a beer. And the beer we're going to use for our recipe is Bud Light Platinum. Melt the butter real quick before we add everything else. You're gonna dip your crab and lobster meat in butter, so why not cook it up in butter? That's what I'm saying, dudes. Dudettes. <laughs> Look at that, excellent. Some uh, garlic powder from the Cormac seasoning. Already got it open. And we're just going to add a little bit of garlic powder to it. That's perfect amount. Don't need any more of that. Facts, Sinister. Facts. <laughs> that's the only, yeah. That right there, look at that beautiful little stretch around. Because that's all Cobra could get. A lot of us can get girls that were just like, you know, you're, you're our age. You don't really, you know what I mean, man. It, you, you know what I'm saying. Now we're going to add some stuff. Some uh, lemon juice. It was like half the bottle there, but there's plenty of that nonsense. Got that in there. And, uh, I know she posted that ad pretending to be that girl, you know, thought she was being the badass internet doxer and had all kinds of people sending naked pictures to a teenager and shit like that. That's not right. That's fucked up, really. It really is. Nice. Now we're going to add our snow crab. So let's just try add the whole goddamn thing in there. This is our, like, crab legs you buy at, like, the grocery stores and, like, your meat slash seafood markets. Now, we're going to take a close look at that sexiness because we're not done adding liquids to it. Well, you already know what's going to happen next. We're going to need some beer. 
crack up on a Bud Light Platinum, wanna pour it in there. Oh yeah, get in there, son of a bitch. And pour a whole goddamn bottle of that in there. Well, I'm feeling kind of fancy, YouTube, so we're gonna add some white wine right here. You can just use whatever white wine, apothic white, whatever. I happen to grab this uh, Roscato Italia cheap white wine. You know, it, it don't got to be super fancy to be good. Crack that open. I'm going to pour that white wine. The, the girl that stood me up on Valentine's Day years and years ago sent me a message a while ago, and I... I, I responded back to her like twice. And I'm like, man, fuck this bitch. The audacity of this bitch. No. <laughs> On top of our beer and our butter. Let's see a little bit to try off camera or on camera. Who cares? Fuck it. A little bit for off camera. Look at that. It's not quite full yet. So we need to add some water to it. Got the cup. We got some water jugs right there. So it don't matter. All right, let me sprinkle more. Just a tiny bit more of our garlic salt powder on top. Just kind of went, went like that real quick. You know what I'm saying? The lid's not open. I'm just demonstrating for you purpose-wise. And I took that fork and I stirred it around. Mixture. Then I took a uh, spoon, made of the same material as like this fork, and right here, and I got it weighing down the crab legs in our mixture as we speak. Later, Sarah. After this, I'm gonna go to bed. It's like 11 minutes. Don't have too much fun. Later on, bye. This pants is barely big enough to fit all those crab legs. This is snow crab. Right now I got the fan turned on to uh, low. Where is that at, El Fupa? Is that, does William Glory Hall have that on his channel or something? Or could you post a link maybe? I, I could look at it and we could look at it. I don't know. I'm watching like a hawk and it starts to overboil and I'll just try to heat down. I'm gonna let those crab legs slowly boil on that white wine. Here's the white wine that I used. I'm a firm believer that if you rape someone like Rupal did, they should just put you out of your misery. People like that are wired wrong. You know, you're a piece of shit. You, you know what I mean. Mm. That's a really good white wine for 21 Up. It has a really nice white wine consistency and a nice sweetness to it, which I think is going to balance out the saltiness of the garlic powder and the sour of the lemon. You know what it boil in that delicious mixture. Making some dank crab legs. Because I was sampling the uh, liquid while boiling it up. The lemon was overpowering. So it needed just a pinch more garlic powder to like kind of like even it out a bit, you know what I'm saying? You can see the spoon right there hold it, holding it down, doing its job. This pan was just a little bit bigger. It could have been no worse, but that's all good. It's all good. This ain't gonna hurt nothing, but check this out, YouTube. Check out this. Yeah, I can't. I can't find that on William Gloryhold's channel. I, I don't. I don't see it. But I would love to read that. That is interesting. You know, from the victim's side. Snow crabs. When it boiled down to a point where the spoon was exposed, I took it out and put it in the sink. Yeah, we're just gonna. Let oh yeah, man. I'd cooked a fucking uh, a corned beef. I made some mashed potatoes, cream spinach. And fucking, uh, it was really nice. I bought her like the $50 chocolates and all that shit. And then the bitch said her stomach hurt and didn't come. And this bitch has the audacity to try and ask me to, 
you know, try and warm up to me. No, you know what I mean? Because she only had one kid at that point. Now she's got three kids from the same dude and all that. No, man, that, that ain't me. That's not for me. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? <laughs> Those uh, snow crab legs boiling that mixture until that level goes pretty down nice and look, nice and low. I've been drinking a little bit of Bud Light Platinum, so don't mind me. <laughs> Smells good, and all that butter and white wine and beer is gonna seep into the cracks of the uh, crab legs and like taint the meat, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm hoping will happen anyways. People are like, what the fuck does your mead look like? And I'm like, it's looking fantastic. Here's what's left of that fire mead. There was like about that much left in the wine jar, I just mixed it with a whole bunch of shit. And Call them today, man. Yeah. The crab legs are gonna boil in the buttery wine beer mixture until that liquid gets down pretty low. I think mean, like low, low. And uh, they'll be fully cooked for sure. I'm gonna let them cool off and just do their thing. I mean, you know what I'm saying, but it tastes good and it smells, and it should be just fine. I, I like red lobster, I like seafood, and crab, lobster, I'm not that picky to be honest. Look, I want the butter to cook all into that crab leg goodness. Snow crab, look, if you go to Red Lobster, they give you some butter to dunk your crab or your lobster tail in. So, Four steps ahead of it, my dudes. I'm gonna check it on it periodically. That's how I know this, when the spoon started to surface, just barely above the liquid. The liquid is slowly boiling off and cooking into the crab legs. It's not gonna overcook it, but it is gonna soak those crab legs, snow crab legs, and the buttery white wine beer flavor. That is just rock star delicious, hopefully. Cobes is starting to look kind of like a toad, isn't he? Like, the way he's all fat and shit and bloated and shit. I don't know, man. For me, this looks kind of like a toad. I don't know why. And if it tastes good. He's be becoming very toadish. Good. Cool. If it tastes like that, nah, I'm not afraid to say it, because that fiery fish pizza was ridiculous. But right now, it just smells like butter in my kitchen, like garlic butter and all kinds of goodness. And some of these recipes I come up with, if they're dank enough, I'd host to them at my own personal cocktail party, if you know what I'm saying. Dankest drinks, the most delicious food, and good company. Cheers. Dude, if they made a fucking scented candle that smelled like the crab legs I'm cooking right now, dude. Red Lobster is delicious in my opinion. Their sugar bay biscuits are the shits. You know, you go in there and you see the lobster tanks and you're like, I want to pet one. And you tickle the lobster and it's just there, no, it's ticklish. And you're like, I'm going to eat you now. This seems a bit excessive, but... Oh shit, YouTube's glitching out. Uh oh. That's YouTube, not me, right?
they give you some butter to dunk your crab or your lobster tail in. So, psh, four steps ahead of it, my dudes. I'm gonna check it out periodically. That's how I know this, when the spoon started to surface, just barely above the liquid. The liquid is slowly boiling off and cooking into the crab legs. It's not gonna overcook it, but it is gonna soak those crab legs, snow crab legs, and the buttery white wine beer flavor. That is just rock star delicious, hopefully. And if it tastes good, cool. If it tastes like that, eh, I'm not afraid to say it, because that fiery fish pizza was ridiculous. Right now it just smells like butter in my kitchen like okay yeah 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 we can watch that Kate video I know exactly the one you're talking about then I have never watched it but I've seen it before I could find it really easily garlic butter and all kinds of goodness and some of these recipes I come up with if they're dank enough I'd host to them at my own personal cocktail party if you know what I'm saying dankest drinks the most delicious food and good company. Cheers. Okay, if they need to fucking set the candle that smelled like the crab legs I'm cooking right now, dude. And Red Lobster is delicious in my opinion. Their sugar bay biscuits are the shit. Alright. Yeah, I'll pop on that, uh, I'll pop on the Rupal video real quick. Hold on a second. Fuck. Stop it. Uh, <laughs> this is not quite as... Ah, uh, I'll just do it in this one then. This is giving me shit to fucking chrome for some reason or another. Alright, Mass Troll. Rupal. There we go. All right, here we go. Let me know when we're live, baby. Oh, we're live. Okay, two thumbs up. Hey, guys, we're live. And I think but they what, could. What's really, what's really important to remember is that his fugitive from and justice case. Now you're going to get faulty with your name and badge number, kid. Shut the fuck up. Name and it's not even Thursday. I didn't have another over lady <laughs> use. Whatever, this is last minute. Because uh, as soon as someone tries to threaten me into like not making videos, it's a surefire way to get like 20 more. You can follow the and what he did and this and the other. Like, dude, knock it off. My family life and its history is none of y'all's motherfucking concern. Is he calling right now? It's none of your guys' business. Now, if I speak about it and I make it your business, then it's your business. But even if I speak about it, that still doesn't make it your business unless I want to make it your business. But until then, y'all motherfuckers need to back the fuck off. Shut the fuck up. Does Rupal come on panel off. or something? Does Rupal come on panel? About about where is it? Do you think in here that it talks about him as goofy ass? I don't I don't really know. Cause I'm tired of everybody saying, "Oh, you're just like your biological father. You're a pedophile, bitch." No, the fuck I ain't. I'm nothing like my father. So y'all motherfuckers need to back off and leave me and my family alone. It's not even Thursday. I didn't have another <laughs> over lady use. <was, laughs> this is last minute. Because uh, as soon as someone tries to threaten me into like not making videos, it's a surefire way to get like 20 more videos made. Because <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm insane. So, um, uh, Wreck and Carrie says, Cyrax says he's getting panic, panic attacks from the stress. So can y'all go easy on him? Absolutely not. But thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> yeah, my... My sympathy for pedophiles really doesn't exist, to be completely honest. Um, so, yeah, yep. Thank you, Pterodactyl. So that's what we're going to start with here. Is uh, WTT says a uh, dollar dollar bill, y'all? I mean, yeah. 
cash rules everything around me. Um, not really. But yeah, so yes, you were not wrong about the day of the week. This is literally just like Cyrex keeps being like, I'll get you arrested if you keep making videos about me. So obviously I'm going to make videos about him. That's just how this works. It's just a given. Yeah, right. Yep. Uh, like, yeah, I can't find the comment. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm lost. He's new around here. So anyway, I'm going to play this because this is a... So I scheduled this video and within an hour he did this. Um, and then I'm going to explain to you why he's probably freaking out so bad about what we're about to do here. What's up, guys? It's your boy. Um, I am taking a break from working on my game to play a little bit of Horizon for some of my friends and hang out. Um... But I did get a phone call this morning, and honestly, I have something to say to y'all motherfuckers that are sitting... Well, here's here's from uh, his victim. All right, Shady Lane, thank you for this video. I am KS, the victim of Rupal Smith. You had a few details that are off, so I'll take a moment to clarify. The reason I was able to give such good description of him because he stalked me before actually assaulting me. They got him on kidnapping because he dragged me across the road at knife point, and he didn't put the shirt around my face until after we were in the woods. It was my shirt. I tried to keep track of him from time to time. It's really kind of sad that his son is such a mental case. I had no idea until today that he even had a kid. All right. I'm so sorry to hear about what he did to you. I hope you're okay. If you are truly this man's victim, I am very sorry for what you went through. Have you thought about speaking publicly to help others? Rupal or Angus, or now he's Willow Ravenwood, is an unrepentant monster. He has... Oh, shit, I know what I could do real quick. Let, er, I will go to William Glory Hole's channel, and if y'all aren't very um, up on the Cyrex shit, I'll play his father's uh, video. Uh, I'll play the... It's on like two minutes long. Let's see, where's the Rupal video? Alright, Rupal video... Ah, shit, I'll just have to go to his videos. Here we go. Okay, this is Rupal's shit. Oh, okay, I got you, I got you. Yeah, you sent that, that comment. I'm going to read that whole thread after this video. I just figured this would be good for, you know, context for someone to know who Rupa was.
You're a bad boy, aren't you? Fucking William Glorio. Fucking hell. All right, here we go. I'll read it again from the start. Thank you for this video. I am KS, the victim of Rupal Smith. You had a few details off, so I'll take the moment to clarify. The reason I was able to give a such, such a good description of him was because he stalked me before actually assaulting me. They got him on kidnapping because he dragged me across the, a road at knife point, and he didn't put the shirt around my face until after we were in the woods. It was my shirt. I tried to keep track of him from time to time. It is really kind of sad that his son is such a mental case. I had no idea until today that he even had a kid. I'm so sorry to hear about what he did to you. I hope you're okay. If you truly are the man's victim, I'm very sorry for what you went through. Have you thought about speaking publicly to help others? Rupal or Angus is an unrepentant monster. He hasn't changed but only learned to be more careful. He's still a danger. I'm always amazed at the people that have come out of the shadows as a result of all this, and I admire the fact that you didn't let this monster win by turning you into a victim. I, don't, I really don't talk about it much. People in my circle know. It was also very public news in our small town, but that was nearly 30 years ago. Haven't had an appropriate venue to speak publicly, other than the trial, of course. Who else has come out? As far as I'm aware, they found things suggesting he had probably done this before, but weren't sure who or how many. I'd be open to conversation with them if they felt that it would be helpful to them. Thank you. I'm doing okay. I'm an upstanding member of society. No mental health issues aside from a few residual PTSD system symptoms, but I think for someone who survived what I did, it's fairly normal, especially if we grade on a curve. I'm sure Rupal Mark Smith has a checkered past. The revelations from a p pedestrian search revealed predatory behavior and brought someone in the chat claiming to be our Rupal Mark Smith's ex-girlfriend who was attempting to defend. It was, Rupal, it was RMS himself and agreed to talk on panel. The web search history showed a definite deviant and predatory behavior, so I wouldn't be surprised to find out he has continued to offend. What I'm referring to when I mention all the people is that the people who have come forward in regard to RMS's son, Chance. If you ever feel like coming forward to raise awareness and profile of this, we can arrange to protect any degree of anonymity you would like if you would be interested in having a conversation and telling your story. I'm not sure who you are in relation to the page, but would hope would, would be open to a conversation. That is a truly horrible thing to have gone through, and I, and I hope that you continue to get the best possible vengeance by living well. I do live well. He had control only for that brief time when he preyed on a child. His sick mind doesn't control my life. I do smile when I think about him crying when he was sentenced to 28 years. <laughs> yep. I'm really sorry you had to deal with a monster like him. His son is just as big a threat to society, and honestly, neither of them should be free. I wish you the best. Of course he is. You can't rehabilitate people like that. So sorry you went through that. I thought you would like to know that Chance, his son, was arrested this evening for what will most likely be aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. I am also a SA survivor, and I'm happy to hear that you've made it out the other end okay. G. Jalen, who you were talking about discussing your assault, is a key person helping to expose and document Chance, hopefully to pretend another, prevent him from further predator behavior. Rupal's father is also a confirmed predator. Helping to expose this family and retain their history is important if you're up to it. If you aren't, that's understandable too. Hope you are doing well. I'm truly sorry for everything you went through. Wishing you peace and happiness. To see you show up here is unexpected, yet incredibly powerful. Your resilience and strength are on full display. You should do an anonymous interview with Death by Design 7 or Mass Troll Mafia herself. Don't feel sorry for his son. He's as bad. Happy you're okay. God bless you. I want to believe this is the actual person, but so many people lie about this kind of thing, saying it's them for just for attention. But if it really is you, I'm really sorry that happened. Yeah, I agree definitely on the fence about the uh, yeah, I agree definitely on the fence about this person. How big was it? What a fucking asshole. It'd be easy to find out if she's really the victim. Sadly, people do lie and I'll never get that. However, I do 100% believe her. I know this is a year late, but you're such a strong woman to come forward then and now on this platform. I wish you nothing but happiness and safety from now on. I speak for everyone here in general that we're all proud you raised above your past. He changed his name to Anus Ravenwood. <laughs> That's pretty funny.
my gosh, you brave woman. God bless you and keep you safe from that horrible he, she, who's using trans ID to excuse his reasons to be in a female places. I'm sorry you had to go through that. God bless you. And that's the end of that. Well, here, let's watch. Here, let's watch the Cyrax fight, and then we go, then we, uh, then I'm going to go to bed. Cyrax fights Marty. Yeah. I'd pop over to uh, Chrome, but for some reason OBS isn't capturing it, so I'm, I'm just going to do it this way. Yeah, like he was, he was, he was going down the alley. His lights off. Look. Oh, here he is. Come on by, buddy boy. Come on by, Sarah. Come on by. Well, that's it for the night. I had fun hanging out with you guys. I really appreciate you showing me that uh, the extra bit about Rupal and his victim. You know, that was cool as fuck. I appreciate that. So I hope you guys have a good night, man. Later on. Bye.